Suddenly, a bright flash appeared in one dimension, as if symbolizing the beginning of something. After one flash, there were three of them, and it looked like a constellation of stars. Suddenly, a guy appeared in this space, quickly following somewhere. The place where the guy was was called the Abyss, and had no boundaries with anything else. This world was very cruel and dangerous. A huge number of monsters wandered the vastness of this galaxy in search of prey. One such creature was the ferocious seven-headed dragon orc. He was insanely powerful and dangerous. His razor-sharp teeth could easily bite through anyone. For a second, the guy hung in the air to concentrate and release a charge of powerful force. A blast of powerful energy was released from the protagonist's hands and struck the seven-headed dragon in a second. The main character fought this creature with dignity and determination and was confident that it would not be difficult for him to defeat it one-on-one. -on -one. Suddenly, the guy heard a loud roar of some kind of animal from behind. He was a little scared and looked in that direction. Right behind him was a huge and ruthless planet eater in this dimension. It was called Vulcan, and now the guy had to deal with several powerful monsters. They were fierce and controlled the territories that belonged to them right here in the abyss. Suddenly, a strange noise in the wind was heard, which meant that another monster was approaching, but no one yet suspected what kind of creature it was. It was very rare to meet two creatures at the same time in such a place, but all three monsters were already participating in the battle. The boy quickly fell into the trap of a ruthless spider, who instantly enveloped him in sticky webs. When the monster approached the main character, he saw that right in front of him was the ruler of the spatial cave of the arachnids, Adio. The spider quickly began to descend with a loud hiss directly towards the victim and eagerly awaited the killing bite. The guy's eyes lit up like two constellations. He was ready to fight this creature. And a moment later, a charge of light was released straight at the monsters. At one point, it seemed to the guy that this fight had taken more than 300 years, but it would have been much easier to deal with them one by one. The huge monsters were defeated. He lost too much time killing them, and now he needs to quickly find a way to return to Earth. As the boy was leaving this location, he received a notification that he had achieved success worthy of the title of Invincible Master of Training, and that the world now resonates with him. His presence became more noticeable here, and as a constellation he became much stronger. When the Earth was first connected with the Abyss, Mankind learned that mythology is not just a product of the imagination. The beings called constellations were the closest to what people considered deities. They blessed them and expanded the ranks of followers. But as with any other rule, as the number of followers grows, so does the authority of the constellation. The Earth, with nearly 10 billion souls, was like a gold mine for the constellations, who fought to take followers from each other. But among them were also far more evil constellations, who wanted to take over the Earth not through blessings, but through sheer force. And this man, no, after these battles, it's hard to call him a man. This constellation appeared to stop this, a completely young constellation, Skylar. At that moment, the man was frying meat and carefully watched to make sure the piece did not burn, and he managed to turn it over in time. There was a brilliantly golden-colored frying pan with an insanely delicious steak on it, which was about to be ready to eat. Someone asked where this frying pan came from. The guy replied that it was a frying pan made of adamantine. The goblin was very surprised that it could cook meat, especially the meat of a bear that eats planets. Even the constellations are wary of this. The ruler of the goblin kingdom asked what kind of oil it was, because it contained a huge amount of magical power. The guy thought for a second, because this name was on the tip of his tongue. He replied that there was some constellation that looked like a cow, and he let it go in exchange for milk. Then the goblin screamed that how could he fight with a constellation? But at that moment, Skylar just wanted normal food. The guy added that his main top priority was collecting ingredients, since his hobby for tens of thousands of years in the abyss was cooking. Then the main character took special kitchen utensils with which he made food fresh and added that it was a very valuable ingredient. But it was his first meat in 300 years, so he could splurge. The goblin couldn't believe that when the guy defeated the constellation, instead of killing for territory, he simply took the milk. His master was truly different from the other constellations. He watched as the boy deliciously devoured a juicy steak of meat. Skylar said it was time to eat and invited his friend to taste something so valuable. Cutting off a small piece of steak and putting it in his mouth, he began to slowly suck on it and feel this unusual taste. After the goblin ate a piece of constellation steak, he felt a powerful force literally bursting out of his body. The power of the adamanta was preserved in the meat. With the help of magical power and thanks to the oil from the mystical constellation, the meat rose to a higher level and its magic circle was activated. The old goblin opened a new mana circle and thanked the master for this dish, which was the best in his life.
the guy watched all this from the side and couldn't understand what was wrong with him. Apparently, they really say that goblins are very strange. Skylar looked up and thought about how much he missed the ground. These events took place on Earth several tens of thousands of years ago, in the very distant past. In the gym, they asked the guy why he was lifting weights, and whether he really wanted to become stronger than he was now. It was the Korean teacher who reminded Skylar that he needed to be in class now. In the distant past, the protagonist was an ordinary person. These events unfolded before he became a constellation with the title of Invincible Master of Training. The boy was simply obsessed with strength from an early age. Skylar was an orphan with no one to rely on, and he knew he had to train to be strong, and he grew stronger and stronger every day. In the era of the abyss, a new profession emerged. It was called hunters and was very honorable because they were engaged in protecting people from the dangers of dungeons and monsters. There are cores and items that drop from killing monsters and are highly valued, as well as artifacts from dungeons where monsters appear and attract many people who want money and glory. The main character had nothing to lose, so he became a C plus rank human hunter. Sitting together in the gym, the guy's boss asked him to slow down a bit on the load. But Skylar knew that going into a dungeon with B rank monsters was too much. The boss said that they could barely even handle a C rank dungeon now. He added that even hunters of that rank were suffering losses in those dungeons, so there was no talk of a B rank at that time. When the young guy once again lifted the barbell, he thought about the skills of magic, martial arts, and artifacts that dropped in the dungeons and that they were all great. No matter how much people use them, they were still too weak. So the guy thought that it was really possible to become stronger just by raiding difficult dungeons. The boss was surprised by these words because does the guy really not care about his life? Does he not have a girlfriend? The guy dropped the barbell and said that even though he was a good guy, they still broke up. Skylar told her that he couldn't go on dates because of training, and she ended up sending him to date the monster. There was no disagreement between them, and it was a peaceful breakup. In one of the locations, one of the monsters was heading straight towards the main character. The guy was ready to fight the ruthless monster, and as soon as he approached him, he crushed all his mighty force straight into him. The hunters who were together in this location sympathized with the guy, because being a master of martial arts is not easy at all. They are hardy, and therefore they make good tanks. But their damage cannot be compared with the damage inflicted by mages. They couldn't fully understand why he decided to become a martial arts master, but while farming, they got a martial arts scroll. And because everyone was only interested in magic, he became useless. And it was from that moment that Skylar decided to start studying him. He cared little about what people said about him and did not regret starting to learn martial arts. As it turned out, martial arts are simple and not as bright and convenient as magic, but the true nature of martial arts, in which fighters received as much as they trained, was well suited for the main character. In addition, no one has canceled the absence of regrets and desires to achieve greater results in training. The guy trained day and night, but it still wasn't enough for him. He fell into the corner of the room and thought that he had reached rank C plus through hard training, but there were still several martial artists who had managed to become stronger than him. Then the guy decided that he should train more, longer, and more often. Even in his sleep, the guy was training. Maybe it wasn't as effective, but it made sense, because in any case, it was considered spiritual training. Suddenly, Skylar saw a bright flash in front of him and asked who was right in front of him. When the light dissipated a little, he saw the constellation of the abyss of the great magician. Between the two scales of the scales, the virtuous goddess of the scales appeared before him. She asked the guy to calm down, because they had little time left, and she got straight to the point. The main character could not have expected that the girl would offer him to make a deal with her. She said that people who meet the constellation always ask a lot of questions, but the guy quickly interrupted her and replied that he agreed to the deal. The great magician asked the guy in surprise how he could agree so quickly and not even want to ask anything about it. Then the main character asked only one question. Could he gain power by making a deal with her? The great magician replied that perhaps this was enough for Skylar. The guy asked why she chose him, because there are many hunters who have a higher rating and more fame. In response to this, the girl reminded that she is a virtuous goddess of Libra, and she has the ability to see the future. She told a story about a great danger that would befall the Earth in a few years. The evil constellations will begin to attack the Earth in full force, and when that day comes, the guy will think that the current dungeons and monsters threatening the Earth were just kindergarten. The goddess predicted this and added that he was the key to preventing this future. The guy was surprised by her words, because how could he influence the future alone? The girl turned to Skylar and said that she would make him much stronger through long, hard, and inhuman training. The guy was shocked by these words and was at a loss. He did not know what to answer. At this point, 
The virtuous goddess of Libra did her best to make the guy as scared as possible, because she knew that only a madman would agree to such a contract. The girl added that through long, hard, and inhuman training, he could become her avatar and extended her hand to him. Even the virtuous goddess of scales was unsure, for to offer such a deal to a hunter was unheard of. This contract was completely unfair and illogical by concluding it with the constellation you become an avatar. All this was something extremely complicated due to the fact that the human soul becomes attached to the constellation. And from that moment on, he will have to live in its constant limitation. The gods appear before people and offer powerful strength and magic that will arrive immediately after the contract is concluded and guarantees an instant rank increase. Constellations are very impatient and there is a lot of fighting to get an avatar and this is a well-known fact among hunters. The guy was happy when he heard that there was some kind of training coming up. A training facility was prepared for the main character in the abyss and the goddess immediately warned that time flows differently in the abyss and on earth. He will have to train alone for several decades even several hundred years. But even if the guy refuses during training, he still won't be able to go back. The main character was very frightened by these words. He immediately imagined one of the rooms in one of his favorite games. Skylar immediately remembered that this was how the hunters became stronger. They signed a contract with the constellation, and it probably wouldn't be fair to become stronger without doing anything. The guy thought that other avatars had also gone through this and became stronger at the moment when they had already made a contract. The great goddess said that she knows how difficult this decision is and demands a lot from a person. She suggested that Skylar think about it for another week and give an answer, but the guy made it clear that he agreed from that moment on. The goddess suggested that he think again, because it doesn't matter where exactly he decides to do this. Then the guy replied that he was not so attached to this world and was just asking to be allowed to leave one letter. If he could become stronger, he would agree to this and even save the whole world as a bonus. At that moment, the goddess began to cry because she was very worried about the rumors that people on Earth were greedy and avaricious. The girl thought that it was a great happiness that her prophecy came true this time. The guy, hearing this, asked her to slow down. Had she really been wrong before? And suddenly a sharp flash lit up in front of the guy. The goddess of the constellation suddenly flew up above the main character, and a bright flash like a star appeared above her head. She asked the protagonist to think about the letter he wants to leave, and the girl will use a powerful force and leave it where he wants. The goddess opened a portal to another world and asked the guy to pass these tests and only then she would accept him as a personal avatar. The main character had never seen such wonders before and slowly approached the portal, trying to touch it with his hand. The portal seemed somehow liquid and soft and as soon as Skylar touched it, the portal sucked him inside like a black hole. After that, the portal immediately closed and in the room where the guy constantly conducted unrestrained training, there was a letter with a signature for everyone. A few moments later, the guy found himself in another world, where the concentration of magic was at a completely different level. Right in front of him was an abyss. It looked like an ordinary dungeon. Scientists on Earth assumed that the dungeon was a broken-off part of the abyss. The guy remembered that all of this was a training facility, but if that was the case, then why was there nothing here? The protagonist looked at his hands and realized that from now on he could start training right there and began to perform martial arts training. At this time, the supreme magicians were watching him. The girl was sure that this time she interrupted the vision in time. The other gods watched as the protagonist trained mercilessly and added that he really looked like a great candidate for an avatar. Although Libra goddesses can see the future, their skills are not perfect, but if they try hard enough, they can see only a part of the future. The rest is just guesswork and theory. In the future that the Libra goddess saw, Skylar was training in the abyss. He ruthlessly suppresses the invasion of evil constellations. The goddess made a very strong man her avatar, and it was a perfect plan, and it didn't matter how long it might take. The main thing was that he swore allegiance to the goddess. The other constellations began to worry even more, because she was too sure of this and this gave them a bad feeling. It only remained to wait a little while for him to arrive for training, because she had already prepared everything. The guy noticed how a powerful tornado appeared not far behind him and was moving towards him. It all looked very dangerous for him, but it was the least test that the goddess of Libra could do for the guy. The main character thought that this was a test of the goddess and that it was impossible to become stronger without facing danger, especially if the task was prepared by her, and it definitely made sense. Skylar immediately entered into a fight with the lightning tornado. Its power was so powerful that the guy felt like his body was being torn apart. But the guy was persistent and said that he had to endure this test, and as soon as he thought about it, a strong whirlwind lifted him sharply into the air. The voice from the tornado said that one can only become stronger by overcoming pain and difficulties, 
because this is God's plan. After a powerful magical storm passed through, the illusion magic that covered the territory of the virtuous goddess of scales dissipated. But this magic was used as a basic security measure, and before Skylar could figure it out, the magical storm raged again. Even the great goddess could not have foreseen this. The two constellations asked each other why the guy hadn't come to them yet. The goddess should have sensed his presence when he entered the training citadel, but for some reason there was still no news about him. The girl screamed that she had left him ten meters from the citadel, and he needed to go a little further. Couldn't he find her after wandering a little? Couldn't earthlings act on their own? The Libra goddess had prepared everything he needed for training, even getting top-notch equipment so he could train safely and effectively. The girl also didn't forget about earthly toys so that the guy could have fun in his free time. All this was the least she could do for a hunter who had accepted such terrible conditions, to prepare a comfortable environment for him so that he could focus on training. Suddenly, a warrior appeared and turned to the lady and reported that he had inspected the perimeter of the training citadel and could not find the person she spoke of. The girl responded in horror that this couldn't be, because she had definitely sent Skylar there. The warrior then suggested that perhaps the magical storm of the abyss had thrown him back. Then the goddess turned to him and asked him to do everything he could to find him and bring this man back. He had to be found and saved, because he couldn't just stay and wander the abyss forever. And the noble warrior accepted the order of the lady and said that he would find him at any cost and went to search through the abyss. The abyss was an endless void, and even the constellations were able to master only a part of this world. And it was simply impossible to find a person who was carried away by a magical storm. The violent flow of mana could simply destroy his body. The guy felt as if he was in the deep sea, although he had never been there. Highly concentrated magical power circulated through his breath, thus strengthening his body. The boy's bones and muscles were strengthened, and his potential increased dramatically. The protagonist wandered in this storm and took it all as a test, a test of becoming an avatar of the constellation. A few weeks later, a storm released the boy and brought his body to the ground. Skylar was barely able to stand, but he was glad that the first training session had gone well and was finally over. He raised his head up and was horrified. It seemed to him that in front of him was the place where the next training would take place. The place where the magical storm brought the protagonist was an empty corner of the abyss, which was not owned by any constellation. Suddenly, a stone monster appeared right in front of the guy, and he thought that the training was that he had to defeat it. Skylar noted that the monster looked like Onyx from Pokemon and was similar to an A-rank monster. The protagonist simply looked at his opponent and couldn't believe that the goddess wasn't overestimating him since he was hardly a C-rank hunter. But Skylar immediately pushed these thoughts aside and was sure that the goddess had carefully planned everything for him. And at that moment, the guy ran straight at the monster. He had enough time to give it a good fight. The main character put all his strength into one blow, but the monster didn't even notice this and there was no reaction. The guy couldn't even scratch him. Suddenly, the stone monster uttered a terrible cry that was supposed to frighten the main character. But this didn't stop the guy, and he was going to smash him into rubble and would train until he could knock him down. One day, the protagonist received this book as a bonus at an auction. It was about divine space art with a D-rank skill. Two guys were talking about how martial arts are not popular. Moreover, they are also hard, and no one needed this book. Then one of the guys decided to just sell it. He said that no normal person would buy it. Skylar was sitting next to him and asked if he could buy this book, because he had always been interested in studying martial arts. The man sold the book without any difficulty, and said that the boy had strange taste for his age, and warned him not to rely on this skill alone. Everyone knew that cultivating strength took a very long time. Even if you thought that this skill would make someone stronger, it was better to learn something else. If mana is the lifeblood of a magician, then Kai is an integral part of a martial artist's abilities. This damage varied depending on the amount of Kai achieved, and so it was natural that a divine space art that slowly cultivated Kai was unpopular. But Skylar was completely different. He had many opportunities to learn other martial arts. He really liked space arts. The guy massaged the stone monster nonstop, because in the divine space art, there is no special way to cultivate Ki. However, instead, Kai permeates every movement from a fist to a milky kick and returns back to the body. By repeating this process, a tiny amount of Kai accumulates inside, but each kick and punch slowly increases the protagonist's Kai. If this training is repeated endlessly, then eventually he will become a master of martial arts, of course. All this was about theory, but not everyone is capable of such training. The guy thought that he had no talent, but in fact he was deeply mistaken, because he has the talent to endure fatigue and make endless efforts. 
That's why he was able to withstand 100 years of repeating the same skill. Thanks to this, he learned the B plus rank skill, the internal destruction fist technique, and then the next level of divine space art. The young man had reached the level of an advanced martial artist and was now a B rank hunter. Then the guy remembered one hunter who was able to become an A rank martial arts master. He was a hunter from China, the only martial artist to reach a rank. The young man became an expert in martial arts, or in other words, about the level of a six circle mage. The girl asked him with great surprise whether he was going to apply for a higher rank and immediately received a positive answer. The guy planned to become the first S-rank martial artist. The main character was not very inspired by this thought, because at this rate he would only be able to reach this guy's level in 1,000 years. At that moment, a stone monster looked at Skylar. The guy asked him why he was looking at him like that, because there was a fair fight between them. The stone snake didn't just ignore him. After the boy had been cultivating key for decades, it could no longer ignore the damage it received. At that moment, the snake couldn't hold back her tears because the guy had forcibly chosen her as a dummy when she was just doing her usual everyday things. At one point, the guy felt a little lost and decided to go somewhere because it was a training ground, so now he can go wherever he wants. Suddenly, the stone snake sat the young man right on his head and moved forward. The main character found this idea funny because simply walking through the abyss was an incredibly boring activity. At one point, the guy heard the sound he heard 100 years ago when he first fell into the abyss. It was the sounds of a magical storm. The boy regarded this as a gift from the goddess, which would lead him to the second test. But the dragon had a different opinion and believed that the man would simply die. The protagonist kindly asked the beast to go with him. But he was afraid, because even the strongest monsters can die if they get caught in a magical storm. Then the monster suddenly jumped and together with Skylar found themselves in the epicenter of a magical storm because he had no choice but to agree with it. After reaching the destination point, the monster was exhausted, and the guy joyfully exclaimed that everyone in the abyss really moves so happily. When the boy reached the advanced level, he realized how incredible the magical storm was. It filled his body with mana and made him stronger, eliminating fatigue. All this was an incredible training in restoring the whole body. To control such a powerful constellation is truly amazing. But the guy didn't fully understand that it was just pure luck that he didn't die immediately after the magical storm caught him. Because if he hadn't taken it as a test from the goddess and allowed the flow to capture his body, the storm would have torn him to shreds in one second. The young man wandered through the abyss and wondered why there was no food here, since he had not eaten for over 100 years, but he still had no feeling of hunger. The guy wanted to chew something and the monster kindly offered him to try the stone. The monster said that theoretically he could eat him because technically speaking, the stone of his body is meat. He happily shared a piece of the stone body, but the guy took it as revenge for using him as a punching bag for 100 years. The monster looked kindly at the guy and waited for his reaction because he had no bad intentions. But Skylar refused such a treat because no matter how hungry he was, he did not want to eat the monster. In response to his words, the creature happily threw him on its head and threw him into the air several times. From this moment on, the protagonist learned everything he needed to know about the stone snake. At that moment, the boy received a combat insight based on the stone serpent's movements. It was about the stone serpent's fist, strong enough to pierce the ground. The punch was strong enough to pierce the ground, but also flexible as if it was floating through the air. And the advanced level master immediately tried out a new fist technique. After that, he was very surprised, and now the guy is not going to stop using divine space arts because it was quite good. After this, the main character began to understand much more, having received a new level of martial arts and was looking forward to the next training. The guy stood on the edge of the cliff and thought about where the next training session would be. After seeing the photo, the guy decided that the next training would be underwater and ran down. He also ordered his friend to stay on dry land as the stone could sink. The guy entered the water elegantly and taking in as much air as possible, dove straight to the bottom. But this was not ordinary water, but poisonous water which immediately penetrated his body, and the charge of ki that he received from the divine cosmic arts began to deplete. The boy began to be attacked by sea monsters, and if his power ran out, his life would be in danger. But with each attack, his body became accustomed to the poison, and his resistance increased. On the shore of the poisonous ocean, like a faithful dog, the monster waited for its owner. He saw something happening inside the water. It was Skylar, who with a powerful leap from the water, found himself right on dry land. The guy told that the ocean of the abyss is very dangerous and that at the bottom he saw something shining and he should get it. Skylar didn't know how he would swim through the poisonous ocean. But if this was all a test from the goddess, then there had to be a way. 
Then the guy began to think about what he should do and how to act in this situation. He then decided that with the help of divine cosmic art, he would accumulate enough key power to swim across the poisonous ocean. But the guy couldn't imagine that all this would take a very long time. He was of course glad that he was becoming stronger, but he didn't understand why this process was so long, and he had been stuck here for 200 years. Then the young man saw his friend eating a lot of stones and asked how tasty it was. He also needed to eat something, but thanks to his mother, he was not hungry, but it was hard to live without food, since everything seemed very gray. When the main character was wandering along the shore, he saw in the distance a monster from the poisonous ocean. The guy's eyes lit up when he saw this fish in front of him. All that was left was to cook it properly. The main character decided that in order to eat normally, he had to cook it first. Then the guy went to get some supplies and with great force, began to knock something out of the rock. He managed to create his first kitchen utensils and for a first attempt it turned out pretty well. The guy found a large stone slab and put the fish on it and began to cut it up. But as soon as his knife cut through the head, the stone utensils melted. The main character was confused and did not understand how to cook it further. Brilliant ideas were much faster than his, and he thought that maybe he should eat it raw, just like sashimi. The stone friend could not stand such thoughts and took something out of his jaw and offered the guy to use it. In Skylar's hands was an adamantine. It was a treasure among treasures, highly valued among rock-type monsters. The guy really liked this material because it did not melt when it came into contact with this liquid, and you can even make a cutting board out of such things. The young man was happy about this because now, by training in the abyss, he would be able to make any kitchen utensil. At this moment, the main character remembered the words of the boss, who kept shouting at him that a person should have a hobby, and now he finally understood what the boss was trying to tell him. Now, if a guy can improve his cooking skills after getting the kitchen utensils, he can kill two birds with one stone, as he will be able to cook food that will help him in his training. Skylar finally cooked a fish steak and immediately began to taste it, even though he only lived once. On Earth, the main character was not picky about food and adhered to a strict diet. Many of his friends asked what was for dinner today, but upon hearing the answer, they immediately said that they had eaten somewhere else. After the guy finished eating the steak from the poisonous fish, he felt some kind of burning inside his body, and green poisonous smoke came out of all his orifices. Even though the boy had absorbed all the poison, it was successfully removed using the Divine Space Arts Kai. At one point, Skylar realized that the poisonous meat had increased his kai and his tongue had simply gone slightly numb. The guy came to the conclusion that poison was one of the ways of energy, because until he was poisoned, he could transform it into kai. Then, the main character decided that it was time to start hunting and he was ready to eat each of them. Thus, several centuries passed, the guy pulled out poisonous fish over and over again and happily devoured them. During this time, Skylar's mind and body changed greatly. During this time, the deadly poison had been successfully expelled many times using the key of the divine space art, and his body now had maximum resistance to the poison. After the protagonist gained resistance to countless poisons, he obtained the A-rank skill, perfect poison immunity. The poison no longer affected him, and moreover, he himself could release and use the poison, thanks to which his skill reached the level of an expert. The guy was talking about how he had gained full resistance to poisons and reached the expert level, something he couldn't even dream of on Earth and should already be an A-rank hunter. But even A-rank hunters are considered strategic weapons, and this will still not be enough to save the Earth from disaster, and the protagonist proceeded to the next stage, namely, to continue training hard. This was the end of his journey with the stone monster. He thanked his friend for everything, and said that the main character's path would be too dangerous from now on. The guy added that his further path lay through water, and since he was a stone type, he definitely wouldn't pass, and ordered him to return home. Because of his resistance to poisons, the ocean was no longer considered a threat to the guy, and now the cruel sea monsters had no choice but to flee from the hunter. From that moment, Skylar became the emperor of this ocean. As the boy wandered through the ocean, he noticed the source of magical power that he had seen on the first day, and now he would finally be able to look at it up close. But this was not a source at all, but a portal to the place of the next training, as the young man had previously thought. The closer he got, the more the thought of what the next training would be like enveloped him. When the protagonist entered the next location, all of his Kai gates were automatically activated and the power completely overflowed his entire body and he received automatic protection from attacks. The body of people who had reached the expert level could independently prepare for battle when they sensed hostility. But even people who are not martial arts experts should be able to sense it upon arriving in this territory. 
the protagonist came face to face with an insatiable thirst for blood that could only be found in a high-level dungeon. Any attribute of a constellation is the laws established on their territory. One of the monsters asked the guy what race he was, and when he heard that the guy was human, he decided that most likely he was here for the first time. Then the monster offered to explain something, to which the main character was very surprised and thanked him for such kindness. The creature took a huge sword in its hand and shouted that the newcomers should have their heads cut off so that they would know that this land is ruled by the Lord of Blood and Battles. Skylar heard about the Lord of Blood and Battles and decided that this training ground had a pretty tough theme, and the battle began between the monster from hell and the guy who accidentally ended up on this earth. After several successful attacks, the protagonist formed a Kai Fist, concentrating all his power and released it straight at the monster's head. The other demons couldn't believe it, that some human could defeat their boss on this earth. The guy shouted that he came to take a test and ordered them to attack him, but the demons did not understand what test they were talking about. Then one of the demons suggested that the boy wanted the attention of the Lord of Blood and Battles and noted that the young man didn't look so bad for a man who looked like a weakling. At that moment, all the monsters and demons of this dimension began to attack the guy to kill him. But the main character was not afraid of this at all, and hit after hit the monsters with crushing force, they could not make him stop using these strange techniques. At one point, the guy realized that he was fighting in too large and open an area and was very heavily surrounded. One of the demons screamed that he looked better than he seemed, but he was still human and was destined to be dog food. The demon unleashed the dog straight at Skylar and they charged straight at him with ferocity. The guy was in the territory under the rule of this constellation, where the main attribute was the second law of nature, which was that a person should always be ready to defend himself. In the territory under the control of the Lord of Blood and Battles, there was only one rule, that all his avatars fought each other endlessly and the guy decided to find an advantageous position and win. After walking a short distance, he came across an abandoned building and decided to go inside. The guy immediately knocked down the door and immediately asked for forgiveness from the unknown owner of the building. But he was going to borrow this house for a short time. But the young man was met by a rather kind monster who greeted him and offered to try the soup he had just prepared. But it turned out that Skylar walked into the restaurant's doors and he was shocked that even in such places they exist. The guy felt awkward about the broken door and asked if he had anything to eat, because he hadn't eaten anything normal for a long time. Suddenly, the monster immediately poured a poisonous vat of stew right onto the protagonist's face. Skylar found himself on the floor, and a satisfied monster stood nearby and asked how well the soup was cooked. But unexpectedly for the monster, the guy got up, because there is no longer any poison that can harm him, and he is able to freely control it. The guy quickly stood up and said that there was a good eatery here. The monster could not understand who was in front of him. At that moment, other demons appeared at the door of the restaurant and were able to find him. They had one goal and one thirst to kill this man. The guy quickly built a shelter out of tables and chairs and invited the demons to come to him. Then Skylar picked up a chair and shouted that he could fight them here for eternity. The guy spent several hours fighting monsters and demons using only a chair, and thanks to this he acquired a new skill using chairs as weapons. The main character was happy about this because the best level of understanding can only be achieved in deadly situations, and he understood why the goddess had prepared such a test for him. At this time, the goddess of scales could not find a place, because there was no news about Skylar for a long time. She also hoped that everything was fine with her assistant too, but he had already flown through a bunch of dimensions and did not understand how he was supposed to find the only person in the abyss. After some time, the main character exhaled loudly. He wondered only one question. How many more times would he have to do this? Due to his mastery of combat skills, Skylar's sensitivity increased, and he felt something supernatural coming from the cauldron. When the boy took the cauldron in his hands, the owner of the building suddenly grabbed him by the leg and shouted that the Lord of Blood and Battles did not want fights to be interrupted by an insignificant death. That here, his power would endlessly revive him to continue, therefore no one could die here. The monster burst into tears like a little girl, and asked to have mercy on him because he had gone through all the circles of hell to get this adamantine cauldron. But the protagonist ordered him to shut up because he believed that he got it by beating up other creatures. The guy added that the point is that now the winner takes all. The adamantine cauldron and this restaurant now belong to Skylar. The young man picked up a huge stone slab because he had heard in a story about martial arts that a retired martial artist owned a small classic eatery. The guy came here only to look for a suitable place for battles, but suddenly acquired a diner that inspired him. The main character proudly walked out of the building, 
because now it was no longer an ordinary eatery, but a place called the Taste Factory. The amazed monster screamed at the boy not to even think about it, because it was all his. But Skylar didn't care anymore. He offered him a great bet. If he wanted to take the restaurant back, he should beat him, because that's how the rules work here. When the guy entered the kitchen, he was surprised at how often the demon chef kept this place. Right on the table in front of the guy were all the ingredients, dishes, and even a special place. The experiment section should not have any problems now. Then the main character decided to check what kind of food was on this table. First of all, he took some piece that looked tasty and filling and was similar to meat. As soon as the guy took a small bite, he realized that he had taken poison and was not very happy about it. He could not understand where the poison came from in the restaurant. Then the young man began to try one of the strange fruits. As he tried one ingredient after another, he realized that there was poison everywhere in this restaurant, and he couldn't understand why there was so much of it and whether demons really fed on it. The boy resigned himself to this and decided that he should eat everything raw and use his poison immunity to convert it into Kai energy. But Skylar suddenly remembered that the poison had no effect on him, and now he would simply use it as one of the ingredients for cooking. From that day on, the boy fought monsters to gain experience during the day, and he experimented with recipes at night, and all this continued in the diner for several hundred years. The main character was calmly going about his daily business, cleaning the restaurant and cleaning the floor from dirt. But each time the monsters and demons returned and screamed at him to give his restaurant back. But the guy shouted that this was now a pub, not some lousy restaurant, and quickly threw all the creatures out of the building. At one point, the protagonist discovered that he had obtained a new skill. Through countless battles, he had obtained an A-rank skill, harmony of body and mind. Now divine space arts had become more natural. The man received a surge of wild energy. The circulation of ki in his body accelerated sharply. The skill of harmony of body and mind was a state in which the body moves in accordance with the mind. After acquiring this skill, the body becomes much faster than before. Every martial artist wanted to obtain this skill, but it was very difficult to achieve. Magic skills are popular and used by many, so they are often sold at auctions. Various scrolls with magic spells were available to everyone who participated in this. But because of this popularity, the scroll of harmony of body and mind was difficult to obtain, some could only crawl through dungeons and hope for a miracle. The protagonist did not understand why, but he was able to achieve harmony of body and mind through prolonged, deadly fights. The guy thought that all the martial artists would go crazy because of this, but there was one question left. When would he return, and whether he would be able to at all? At this time, the Lord of Blood and Battles was pleased with all who received his blessing and continued to wage continuous battles. The demon chief could not believe that an army of monsters could not defeat one person after a hundred years. The main character sat quietly on the table and meditated while the monsters did not understand how to open the closed door. This building was so strong and powerful that they could not demolish it to kill a person. By the time the demons realized that their strategy wasn't working, the protagonist also realized that something needed to change. He looked at his hands and realized that he had stopped getting stronger, that his strength was fading with each passing day. Of course, he absorbed some energy through his culinary research, but his progress in martial arts had completely stopped. The boy was still inside. He could no longer experience things like harmony of body and mind. Behind the door, there were screams of monsters who were shouting about adamantine nuggets and fresh meat of the void beast, from which strength would increase dramatically. All of these were unsuccessful attempts by the monsters to lure the main character out. Over the years, the demons had come to an agreement that as long as Skylar was hiding in a dive bar or a pub, they wouldn't even scratch him, and so they tried their best to lure him out. Suddenly, the doors of the pub opened and Skylar shouted that he could forgive a lot, but asked the demons to end this unfortunate performance. The monsters were surprised, because they could not have expected that the guy would actually come out to them. And at that moment, all the creatures flew towards the guy as if they saw an appetizing and tasty piece of meat. All this time, the demonic pub was not only a refuge, but also the cause of Skylar's stagnation. Being isolated in the pub meant he stopped engaging in the death matches that had accelerated his growth. That's why he decided to play along with them, even though the demon's acting was some of the worst. But at the moment of the fight between the demons and the guy, there was a huge and powerful demon, which became a small problem for Skylar. The demon screamed that today would be his last day and that he would no longer have to pretend to be a strong guy who would simply be hidden in this building. In response to this, the main character turned to the demon boss, saying that he was afraid that at this rate he would not advance in martial arts. These words angered the creatures, and they began to attack the guy, but he was so fast and agile that they couldn't even touch him. 
One A-rank martial artist described powerful strength as a state in which he is filled with confidence. Before this, Skylar couldn't understand this, but now that he had reached the level of an expert, the young man realized that before in battle, the guy always felt like he was cornered, randomly attacking in all directions with all his kai. The feeling he had of lack of confidence had completely disappeared, and he was now completely calm and full of strength. The whole world told him that he was stronger than all the demons around him. He could dispel the enemy attack with divine space art. The main character easily took the demon by his sword, because now he learned to use the enemy's strength against him. At this moment, he learned the martial art of the samurai, in which the opponent's strength is used against them. After a successful fight, the guy was happy that he managed to get a piece of fresh meat and an ingot of adamanta. Soon the guy returned to the pub again and shouted that he would gladly fight them again any time if they brought him more gifts. The next day, a piece of meat and two beautiful ingots awaited the main character. The demons brought them as promised and offered to fight them again. The guy immediately left the building and was surprised. There was no one in front of him. He couldn't understand where everyone had gone because they wanted to fight him so much. Suddenly, the demons started firing from the air. They decided that the guy specialized in close combat and therefore decided to finish him off with long-range attacks. Skylar successfully escaped this barrage, and thus his body became even stronger after the demon attacks. All the demons were wondering the same thing, when would he finally die? But time after time, they received a direct hit from spells, because now Skylar had received the skill of invulnerability. From that moment on, the more the demons spent their strength, the stronger Skylar became, and each time the gap between them increased. More than several hundred years have passed since these events, but the merciless battles between man and demon continue to this day. A line of demons had already formed to wait for the legendary battle, but when the main character came out, he announced that there would be no fight. One of the demons waited the whole morning to fight under the pub and was very upset about it, but a resourceful guy suggested that next time he take a number for the first fight. The guy warned that he would not fight with those who did not stand in line and would make scenes, but one of the demons calmed the main character by saying that the demons who wanted to fight would obey him because it was difficult to find a strong man like a human and they were forced to stand in line. As Skylar returned to the pub, the young man thought about how he had somehow become close to these guys and he assumed it was natural after hundreds of years of fighting. The boy held an A-rank hunter card in front of him. It was a magical item received when first registering with the association and when the owner filled it with magical kai, it showed the owner's statistics. The guy had long forgotten about this card, and after some time decided to take it out and look at the result of long training. When the boy took the card, he was shocked, because he received so many skills that on earth he could only dream of it. But one of the last skills seriously interested Skylar. He didn't know what it was and what this skill gave. It had a worldwide resonance. The boy couldn't believe his eyes, because this skill was D-rank when he first learned it. He had never seen the rank rise so quickly, but it was all because of the training in the abyss that had already taken several centuries and even more than 1,000 years. One of the A-rank skills was perfect immunity to poisons, the ability to freely control poisons and gain Kai when absorbing it. The second skill was the harmony of body and mind, the ability to use the body the way the owner wants it. The third skill meant the ability to redirect the opponent's power back, even if it was greater than the main character. The fourth skill was invulnerability, where the skin became harder than steel and was able to block most attacks. The guy knew about all the abilities he received, but then he noticed the card coherence. It was one of the skills he heard about back on Earth. The meaning of this skill was that hunters use mana or kai as a source of power when using the skill, and when the quality of this source drops, it will result in a loss of effectiveness or a failure to use the skill. However, if the user has an unimaginably large amount of pure kai, it will reach a legendary level, creating an illusion of three colors during Kai meditation. Skylar was puzzled because this skill was available to hunters who had learned a unique A-rank martial art like the Divine Twilight art. But the guy didn't know that although the Divine Space art is weak in terms of growth rate, it allows you to create Kai stronger than any other martial art. And Skylar has been training this art for more than 1,000 years. A martial arts expert card meant that the person had the ideal physique to learn martial arts. This primarily meant that they had a high affinity with Kai, and most people with this skill received it at birth. The guy suggested that it might be due to the magical storm, since he never had any innate talents. Skylar was grateful to the goddess for this, because she really planned everything and made the magical storm the first part of the training. But the girl still didn't know where he was. Through countless battles, his understanding of martial arts had almost reached perfection, 
and the boy could flawlessly copy any martial arts at first sight. It was believed that it was difficult to master even one martial art in a lifetime, and this skill would allow him to use different techniques depending on the situation. This skill was really strong, but in the end the guy saw one of the abilities that didn't even have a rank. It was a world resonance where the world resonates with the protagonist because he is close to reaching the peak of existence, but the guy did not understand a single word and thought that maybe the hunter's card was broken. But at that moment, Skylar did not realize that this is the thing that will make the whole earth go crazy. While the guy was carefully studying the hunter's cards, he prepared a whole vat of delicious soup. At this point, the demons were discussing how Skylar was a strong opponent and couldn't understand how he could be so strong. One of them had been competing with him for 500 years, but he was still stronger. The guy approached the losers and offered to try one of the most delicious dishes of this establishment. The monsters happily tried what the main character had prepared on the condition that after eating, they would defeat this man. Skylar practiced cooking continuously, making changes to the menu and each time it became tastier and tastier. But sometimes the demons didn't like the food and they weren't going to eat it, because even pigs wouldn't eat it. The protagonist accidentally poisoned the demon and decided that next time it would be better not to add this ingredient to the soup. Suddenly, someone's voice shouted that a warrior was coming for battle. He was not a prisoner who could be tortured like this. A huge demon was walking towards the guy and refused to play his games and asked the man to fight him. As soon as the demon came within a meter, he immediately received a powerful punch right in the chest and jumped back several meters. The boy couldn't understand what he didn't like about his food and forbade him from entering here even after he was resurrected. After that, Skylar smiled and apologized for this situation and told the demons not to be shy about trying the food. The demons liked the young man's food so much that they offered to serve this dish to their master, the Lord of Blood and Battles. The young man was very flattered and was glad that they liked everything so much. Demons were really different from people. They thought that this food was very tasty, and those who ate until they were full did not come to the pub for more than a month. After such a time spent in the kitchen, the guy received the skill of beginner cooking of the abyss. The main character continued to train hard and intensely every day, and he really wasn't wrong, because his skills didn't improve at all. He could no longer cultivate ki, it felt like his body was blocked due to it being overfilled. His growth was stopped. The boy thought about how his top martial artist was just an expert, and even though he wanted to become stronger, he no longer had a role model, because there was no longer a martial artist stronger than him. The guy had to break down this wall, and there was only one way to become stronger, it was to fight a new enemy. With an enemy that is many times stronger than these weak demons, the guy needs to fight someone who is stronger than even him. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door of the pub and asked the owner to come out. When the guy opened the door, he kindly invited me to taste the excellent meat he had prepared that morning. The main character kindly offered the guest to sit down at any free place, and he would bring meat without rice in the meantime. Skylar was a little wary, because in front of him was a completely new demon. He looked at its statistics while showing the table. The demon said that he had heard a lot about him and was eager to see his skills. Skylar knew that this guest was very strong and much stronger than him. He had enormous magical power that was strong even for the demonic race. And at that moment, the main character realized that a new stage of training was beginning. The guy kindly served the guest and brought him the dish of the day, meat without rice. The demon began to slowly taste the main character's food. It was clear that he was much stronger than the guy. When the demon finished eating, he thanked him for the food and added that he had heard that the owner of this place liked to collect valuable minerals. At that moment, he took out a huge ingot of adamantine, which was of a size never seen before. The guy held this ingot in his hands and did not know what to say. He thought that the demon paid him too much and offered him another portion of rice. But the demon refused, saying that one was enough and everything was delicious. The demon turned to the man and said that his name was Varigo, he was the first avatar of the Lord of Blood and Battles, and the one to whom he had given the bloody axe, and he had an offer from his master. The guy was very surprised by this and asked what proposal he was talking about. Then the demon added that all this time the Master Lord of Blood and Battles was watching him, and now he wants the guy to become his avatar. Varagot was sure that Skylar would accept the offer, but despite the fact that he is a wanderer from the outside world, the guy is not crazy enough to go against the will of the constellation. The protagonist cautiously asked for forgiveness, but he cannot accept the demon's offer. Varigot was furious because the boy refused his master's offer. The guy said that he was under a lot of pressure and that he was the strong opponent that the young man had been waiting for so long. The demon did not understand this because the guy had a talent worthy of praise from the master 
to not hide his fighting spirit in front of someone who was definitely stronger than him. And this was exactly the quality that the Lord of Blood and Battles desired. The demon screamed about what the guy was not happy with if he rejected such a sweet offer. Then the demon suggested that perhaps the guy was already an avatar of another constellation, but he did not feel the presence of the constellation in him at all. The protagonist replied that he was not an avatar yet, but had already promised the constellation that he would become one when he passed her test. The creature tried to find out, because perhaps the guy was deceived. But the main character was persistent and did not understand what the demon was trying to achieve, because if he wanted to fight, he would be ready for it with joy. The demon asked the guy not to rush and listen to him, because what he was talking about did not add up in his head. Constellations enter into a contract with an avatar because of their desire. No constellation will accept someone unworthy as an avatar. And to be desired by one constellation meant that other constellations from the abyss would also desire it. And so the constellation immediately makes a contract with the avatar candidate so that others do not do this. But if they want to train the candidate, they do it on their own territory. This is all because there are cases where the candidate may be intercepted by other constellations while he is wandering outside. And if this happens, then the constellations will laugh at him for 10,000 years. But the boy shouted that Varigo had missed something because the constellation he had promised could see the future. And the boy was sure that she had chosen this strange method because she had foreseen it. The demon wasn't completely sure because foreseeing the future is a rare and special skill. But the protagonist replied that this is what proves that his constellation is better than he thinks, because she was able to think that nothing would happen if he trained outside of her territory. After these words, Skylar bragged about the training he had gone through and all the trials he had faced for hundreds of years after he had been caught in the magical storm and how carefully these trainings had been planned. But the demon replied that this made even less sense, because the magical storm of the abyss is not something that can be controlled, and even the constellations cannot do it. It is a dangerous and powerful catastrophe. The guy was already less confident in his words, and he added that shouldn't at least one constellation be able to control this? The demon said that if it were, it would immediately conquer the entire abyss. He also asked if the guy was sure that it was not the constellation that sent him, but that he simply fell under a magical storm. But the main character did not want to listen to the demon's words and ordered him to shut up. Skylar didn't think Varigo was lying, because it was the truth, and now he knew a lot. But he was enjoying the process of becoming stronger so much that he didn't have any questions until this moment. The guy was angry. He didn't understand how stupid he was and why he hadn't thought about this before. At one point, the young man wanted to burst into tears, but he couldn't do that, because every tear would exhaust Key and his courage. Skylar walked out of the pub and headed forward, now he knew that he was not at a training facility, but simply in another location. And now he urgently needed to return to Earth, because he had wasted 1,000 years. But the demon upset the guy by saying that he could not leave this territory of the Lord of Blood and Battles. And at that moment, Varagoth, gifted with a bloody axe, showed his true form, and the blessing of the Lord of Blood and Battles enveloped him. He felt sorry that he had to break such a precious gem like the guy who was right in front of him. He calmed the guy down and told him not to despair because his master was very generous and when the main character died, he would bind his soul and resurrect it. The guy didn't understand what kind of nonsense Varagut was talking about. He refused to play their games and immediately attacked the main demon. The demon noticed that the guy had a special walking technique and he did not feel any magic and his movements were much faster than teleportation magic. The protagonist demonstrated a technique of divine space art movements using Kai and it was called the moonwalk. The demon replied that his master was interested in him for a reason, but he did not intend to continue this any longer and ordered him to prepare to serve his master. Varigot used blood baptism. It was condensed mana, and to use such an amount of mana you need to be very strong, and even the invulnerability skill did not allow you to stay under it for long. The demon screamed that now the end had come for man, and the lord of blood and battles was waiting for him. A downpour of crimson mana melted and destroyed everything it touched. This technique showed in all its glory the difference between the power of Varagoth and the power of a human mage. But thanks to the skill of harmony of body and mind, the protagonist's senses became sharper. His Kai consumption was significantly reduced, and the effectiveness of the martial art he used increased. The divine space art had unceremoniously warned him, and it was because Skylar was in great danger. When faced with a crisis situation where the enemy was much stronger than the guy, his mind was very calm and the discomfort of wasting time due to misunderstandings had already disappeared. It was that similar moment when the guy got caught in a magical storm, 
where it wasn't the speed that was important, but the feeling of the flow, and then he would be able to dodge. The level of martial arts proficiency was increased, and the guy received an S-rank skill, incredible speed, a technique that allowed him to move in the blink of an eye to the desired location. Varigo couldn't believe his eyes because the guy completely dodged the bloody baptism. Until this moment, he thought that martial arts were only studied by weaklings and expressed great respect for the man. In the Abyss, magic skills are the most popular. They consume mana, and magic users can take unlimited mana from the outside. On the other hand, martial arts consume the user's internal strength, and compared to magic, martial arts have a limit. After meeting the main character, the demon understood why martial arts were created, because it really amazed the mind. And he told an old story about slaves rebelling in the territory of some constellation. They wanted to resist the law of this world. And once they went against the constellation, they could no longer use mana. However, it was not so easy to suppress the rebellion because of their wonderful skill, thanks to which it was possible to use without borrowing mana from the outside. The guy thought it was about martial arts, but what if he used magic? The demon added that after his body had melted from the bloody baptism, he would have already met the Lord of Blood in battles. And at that very second, the guy flew straight at the demon so that he could see the true power of martial arts. The demon understood that before him was indeed a special person, but he was Varigo and his master gifted him with a bloody axe. And then the demon used the magic of the bloody axe and dealt a powerful blow to the main character. The guy shouted that with this magic the fight was miserable, and maybe he at least has weaknesses in close combat, because it couldn't be that magic was capable of everything. For the first time in a long time, the main character was on edge because he was faced with an enemy who was significantly superior to him in strength, skill, and magic. With each attack he made, he felt himself becoming stronger, and by gathering the required amount of Kai in one point, he created Kai Fists. And as soon as he managed to do this, he performed the most powerful Fist of Space, which struck the demon with such force that Varagut could not have expected it. But even this was not enough, and the demon was amused by the interesting tricks, but this was not enough to completely defeat him. A few skills, such as using speed or dodging, were only good for defense, but the problem was with attack power. To break through the dozens of layers of protective magic with which Varagut defended himself, he had to deliver a powerful blow. Then the main character thought that Key's fist was the result of Key compression, but such compression would hardly be enough, but he decided to try anyway. In theory, the Kai fist did not fully utilize the compression of Key, and it was possible to compress Kai to the point of materialization, and this technique is called Kai materialization. The protagonist's idol, the greatest martial artist on earth, was the first to be able to materialize Ki, but he could only hold the materialization for a moment because this technique absorbed a huge amount of energy. He could not use it in real combat, but Skylar has long since surpassed his martial arts idol over 100 years ago, and with a powerful stream of energy, he struck Varagoth straight in his heart. The guy couldn't quite believe that he had managed to do it, and that he had destroyed the Blood Shield spell and the Master's Blessing. The protagonist managed to destroy all of Varagoth's defense, but if he uses the manifestation of Kai again, his energy will be depleted. The battle between the human and the demon was still going on, and the lower-ranked demons were wondering when it would end, because at this rate, they would grind this place into dust. Varagoth had been fighting the main character for six months already, and this man was a legend. So the main character used the Fists of Space, his energy was quickly depleted due to the use of this skill. The scanner was at a dead end. Although he could break through Varagoth's defense with the materialized Kai attack of the Divine Space Art, but he couldn't use this deadly attack due to the huge consumption of Kai. Although his skills quickly restored his energy, he still needed time to use the Cosmic Aura again. Varagoth turned to the boy, saying that they had spent too much time on this and he could no longer restrain the Lord of Blood in battles. And at that moment, a loud noise was heard meaning that the Lord of Blood and Battles blessed the demon with the power to win. The protagonist could barely stand on his feet while Mr. Varagoda granted him additional strength. Skylar knew that he was in great danger and knew why the demon had shrunk in size. He did this to increase his speed, to be more mobile and sharp, so that the protagonist could not keep up with his fast and lightning attacks. The fight between the demon and the guy continued. The main character repelled one attack after another, continuing to accumulate energy and trying to defend more than attack. The demon's attacks were so strong that at one point Skylar's invulnerability was broken and he needed time to restore it. He understood that if he lost concentration, he would die immediately and there was no way he could relax or stop. From the moment he entered the abyss, the protagonist never used up all his energy completely. After all, in the abyss, 
where there were plenty of dangerous enemies and creatures around, using all your strength was tantamount to suicide, and there was no way to use it up completely. But the main character understood that he was not in a situation where he needed to accumulate energy and spend it in small parts. And then at one moment, Skylar released all the juices from his body, accumulating such a flow of energy that with one blow, he cut off the demon's hand. At this moment, the protagonist learned the cosmic Kai breakthrough. It was a completely new technique that was added to the divine cosmic art. And this art improved. Varagot felt that even after such a crushing blow, no matter how, he had to defeat this man. Because if he doesn't put an end to this, Skylar will become even stronger and more powerful to the point that he will no longer be able to inflict even the slightest damage on him. Considering the fact that they were in the territory under the control of the Lord of Blood and Battles, there was no way the demon could lose this battle. Varigo could not simply stand by and watch as a new constellation was born on the territory of his great master. Suddenly, the demon saw a bright light that slowly began to blind him. He wondered where it came from. As soon as he opened his eyes, he saw that Skylar, hundreds of times larger than him, was standing in front of him. At that moment, the protagonist realized what it meant to empty all the energy from Kai. The wall that the main character had encountered, the amount of ki that was in his body, all of this was now completely unimportant because all the powerful energy was inside him. And now if he can take all the energy outside the body, then the world will become his energy. At this moment, the boy had achieved a perfect understanding of the key materialization skill and was now able to freely use this materialization. The skill of world resonance has increased and now the world awaits his defeat. The constellation of the abyss watching the battle showed great interest in it. From that moment on, all the constellations were ready to get the main character as an avatar. The guy finished off his opponent blow after blow, and at one point the demon was able to utter the last words that he had lost this fight to the man. The guy defeated the first avatar of the Lord of Blood and Battles, the demon king Varagoth, gifted with a bloody axe. The protagonist received power from the whole world thanks to the skill of a master craftsman. The demon was trampled right into the ground and added that the boy had now earned the right to reject his master's offer. Even though the battle was long and difficult, Skylar thanked the demon from the bottom of his heart. Varigo added that he should listen to his words because no matter what constellation offered him to become his avatar, he should not accept it from it. The demon advised the boy to become so strong that no constellation could look down on him, thereby becoming famous in this abyss and becoming a constellation. The protagonist looked at the enemy he had just defeated and replied that he understood everything and would definitely listen to his words. At that moment, the demon disappeared, saying that he would look forward to the next battle. The guy looked at the bright flash and shouted for him to come back, because he had to give him what he deserved. The protagonist began to think about words so that he would become a constellation, becoming a master, the level at which he accepted the world as a whole person. Skylar began to feel something that he could not previously. It was the gaze of the constellations watching him, their pressure and how powerful they were. The protagonist decided that he could match them if he became a little stronger. Suddenly, other constellations of the abyss began asking Skylar to meet with him. The abyss constellation did not move. They could not do so, as they were constantly targeting each other's territories. And if one of them accidentally left their post, they would fall in an instant. That is why the constellations watched the world without leaving their own thrones, watching the avatars or those who are worthy of becoming them. The guy couldn't believe that someone had been watching him all this time, as if he had been shown on the regional news. After the great battle, the Lord of Blood and Battles placed a bounty on Skylar's head, and every creature that was in that territory hunted him. But from that moment on, the protagonist had nothing to fear, because he declared that he would become a constellation, while others watched his triumph. On the ground in the gym, the men saw a guy on TV who had signed a contract with the star. He said that everyone envies him because they also want to sign a contract with the star, but in reality, everything is not so colorful and wonderful. The guys were surprised by his words, because they did not understand how one could speak about such things directly and openly. The man spoke about the rules of the constellations that connect him, and you are under observation 24 to 7 hours. Skylar heard his friends loudly discussing this guy about how he was handsome and became an avatar, and basically he already had everything. But why was he whining that it was so hard for him? At that moment, the guy realized what the hunter from TV meant, he was obliged to act according to the rules and obey the order of the constellation, but if he disobeyed, then an unimaginable punishment awaited him. Being an avatar that everyone envies means being a slave in beautiful shackles. All the while the guy was thinking, small demons attacked him and tried to avenge the honor of their master. Since childhood, the guy wanted to be strong, 
not so that strong guys like them would pay attention to him, he wanted to choose his own path. As strange as it may seem, Varagot was right, and the guy can't leave his fate to the discretion of the constellation after he's come so far. At this moment, the main character received various messages from the constellations offering to give new skills or those who were simply impressed by the level of his martial arts. All this greatly irritated the guy. Skylar didn't know how to use magic properly, but it was as if it didn't need to be used, and it was better to achieve everything with the help of martial arts. Suddenly, one of the constellations of lava and magma gave the main character an ingot of adamantine and added that he looked like a hipster. Skylar thanked him for the gift, but immediately received an offer from the constellation to receive more valuable minerals in exchange for the contract. But the main character shouted that he was going to become a constellation, and it was pointless to lure him with such gifts. After the battles over the demon, everything was destroyed, and the main character returned to the pub and did not understand why he was considered a hipster, because he did not look like one at all. When the guy came back, he saw that the whole establishment looked like some kind of barn with a bunch of garbage and complete chaos. Among the pile of rubbish, the boy dug up a golden vat in which he cooked food. He carefully wrapped the vat with rope and no longer paid attention to the notifications from the constellations. The guy got ready to set off. The main character left the modest restaurant that brought him so many emotions and went into an unknown world. At one of the locations, a creature with a double head was following the path, when suddenly a voice was heard asking if they had seen a human male here. It was one of the guardian angels of the constellation who continued to search for the guy all over the world and showed what the guy looked like. The creature smiled when they saw who was shown to them and asked what kind of ugly creature was in front of them and why they should answer to some angel at all. Suddenly, there was a loud noise and the same creatures that were in front of the angel crawled out from under the ground. The vicious dogs began to threaten him, saying that he had entered the wrong area and had completely lost his sense of smell. They added that this area is not subject to any constellation and is the most secret and isolated neutral zone in the abyss. The dogs immediately pounced on him so that the angel could feel the fierce claws of freedom. But as soon as the creatures got closer to the angel, they immediately received a powerful blow, after which they flew back several dozen meters. The man then repeated his question, asking if they had seen the guy, and the dogs, horrified, apologized for making such a mistake and replied that they had not seen anyone. After these words, the guardian angel flew away to look for Skylar and thanked the creatures of this location for the information. The angel of the virtuous goddess of Libra continued to search for the man all over the planet. He talked to races capable of speech. He endlessly asked if anyone had seen Skylar. While the angel was wandering through the abyss, he received various notifications from other constellations, since avatars rarely leave their territory and everyone was interested in what was going on. For the constellations sitting on the territory and bound by their own rules, watching the avatars of other constellations was quite simple entertainment. And at that moment, the angel used the skill of the goddess's veil, and now he was hidden from the sight of all the constellations, and one of the observers was furious at the use of such a cheap trick. And the constellations continued to send different notifications, some asking to remove the veil, and some offering various riches in return, just to see what was hidden behind the veil. The virtuous goddess of Libra sent this particular angel on this impossible mission because he will conscientiously carry it out without succumbing to temptations from other constellations, even if he himself considers this mission impossible. Meanwhile, in an abandoned sector on the territory of the Lord of Blood and Battles, the main character continued to train. Now, thanks to the master's rank, the divine space art had been perfected, and now the amount of key did not matter at all, and the skill of a martial artist allowed him to perfectly use all martial arts. But despite this, Skylar continued to practice the powerful punch of the space fist. Just like when he first learned the divine space art, he put his whole soul into every strike. Suddenly, the boy received a notification that since he continued to live as befits his power, his essence had greatly increased. When the protagonist decided to leave the territory after defeating Varagoth, a change occurred in the mysterious skill World Resonance. When he took the card in his hand, it shone brightly, and he read that the world now resonated with him because he was close to reaching the peak of existence, and his title had changed to an invincible training master. At this moment, Skylar realized that when he reached the master level in the divine space art, he had perfected all the skills to the level of flawlessness, and now, in order to become stronger and gain the status of a constellation, he needed to obtain the degree of a master of divine cosmic art. On the way, the guy met demons who shouted at him that he could not escape anywhere because he was in the territory under the control of the Lord of Blood, and now they would kill him for humiliating their master. 
But Skylar kept thinking that he should strengthen the essence by following the principles, and the world tells him that this is the way to become a constellation. The guy was haunted by these thoughts, and he walked confidently towards his goal, scattering all the demons that came his way. The only principle he must follow is that of an invincible training master. He must train all the time and never lose. The guy confidently walked towards his cherished goal. It suited him perfectly because he wanted it so much. The main character continued to train and left the corner of the abyss, where the gaze of the constellations could not reach him. And each time he became stronger and stronger, this was the whole power of the essence. In the battle with Varagoth, the protagonist gained two new skills related to his essence power. One of these skills was a good giant fighter. His power grew when he entered into battle with a strong opponent. The second skill was called self-control. The power of this essence grows as he lives in accordance with the essence. Self-control is a skill that tells the owner how to live as a constellation. Constellations are the beings that write the rules and are the rules. What if the serpent bearer of plague and darkness used a healing spell? Or if the lord of blood and battle tried to resolve everything peacefully, the power of their existence would weaken and their strength would be greatly reduced. In order for the protagonist to use this skill, he must fight someone stronger than him. But there was no way he could lose to him even once. It all sounded really complicated, and he liked that it was time to get serious, and at that moment a bright flash appeared in the sky, like a star. Skylar thought that this was another monster, and it looked like it was really huge. The star fell straight into the ground, and the guy hoped that this time it would be much stronger than him. Suddenly, a huge silhouette of a terrible monster appeared from under the ground, flew up and was ready to attack Skylar. The main character could not believe his eyes. He could not have expected that this creature would appear here at that very second. In front of him was his old friend Onyx, who had been looking for the guy all this time and had finally found him. The boy joyfully threw himself into the arms of his old friend. During this time, he had grown considerably and was much larger than usual. Suddenly, a whole company of people like him appeared behind Onyx. It was his family. The creature warned the boy that it was not safe to be here and wanted him to run away from here. Suddenly, there was a fierce roar and the ground beneath their feet split into two parts. Skylar's old friend Onyx and his family were city-sized monsters, but this monster that just appeared was on another level. The guy saw a super giant monster that had never appeared on Earth before. It could be classified as the highest rank. The whole world should be on full alert when it appeared. The protagonist felt that the monster was emitting too much magical power, that it gave him goosebumps, and that it was definitely stronger than Varagoth. The guy discovered a hydra, a nine-headed snake, which was at the level of a constellation in strength. All this time, Skylar found the attention of the constellations annoying. There were constellations that became such by watching the adventures of the main character. But most mocked or ridiculed him, and some were even hostile. One such constellation was the Lord of Blood and Battles, whose first avatar suffered a crushing defeat. To all of them, Skylar was a beast that had not yet reached adulthood, so they must do everything in their power to prevent him from becoming a constellation. That's why the boy went to the neutral zone, where the constellations couldn't track him. But the lawless zone was a place where the strongest ruled. It was a place ruled by monsters that were as strong as constellations, and they weren't bound by the rules like constellations. The creature was amazingly strong and used powerful magical power and went at everyone like a bulldozer. If the guy defeats the Hydra, his power will essentially increase significantly. The world resonance skill now resonated, and the boy received a notification that he was now an invincible training master. The protagonist's skills forced him to fight this monster, but even without them, his choice remains the same. The guy accepted this fight and immediately screamed sharply for this clumsy snake to attack him. Hydra had bullied his friend and his family, and it didn't matter how strong it was, the monster would now regret it. The creature began to attack the main character. It considered him an insignificant creature and was impatiently waiting for his death. It added that even the constellations fell to their knees because of its poison, and its breath would incinerate him in a second. His nine heads emanated a powerful force that would freeze most opponents due to telepathy and bloodlust. But Skylar was already used to this, because he had already been in many battles on the territory of the Lord of Blood and Battles. The guy suddenly took off and delivered a powerful blow to one of the Hydra's heads. This blow was so strong that it took off the head in a second, and the Hydra could not understand how this brat dared to do such a thing. But the Hydra restored its head, thanks to the divine regeneration skill, and all the guy's efforts were in vain. The monster turned to the boy and said that he was able to cut off his head, but now he had to pay for touching him. The entire body of the Hydra was suddenly filled with the strongest poison, from which neither the hero nor the constellation could withstand. 
The guy didn't understand why the creature was saying what it was going to do, and why it needed all this. But before him stood a monster that even the constellations of the entire abyss feared. They could do nothing, even if they found out what would happen next. And only the nine-headed hydra announced the fate of the enemy. The enemy has no choice but to accept the fate that the hydra has predicted for him. When the monster filled the entire atmosphere with the strongest poison, a bright flash appeared inside this steam. In the distance, the hydra saw a guy who managed to cope with this poison and survive. The monster could not understand how he stopped their poison. At that moment, the guy felt like his head was about to explode because of that telepathic scream. And if he hadn't had perfect immunity to poisons, he could have suffered. But this feeling was not the same as when he fought Varagoth. It was far superior to the power of divine space art and the materialization of Kai. The boy screamed that he wanted to cut his head off and began to perform one of the most powerful blows he had mastered. At that moment, the protagonist realized that his power of existence had grown significantly because this effect increased as the power of the entity increased. All this was written right in the skill description, and the guy couldn't believe that he now had such incredible skills. The main character was not cornered, and on the contrary, he was able to defeat the Hydra with one blow. But even after this blow, when the Hydra lost several of its heads, the battle did not end there. Despite the fact that the guy knocked off the Hydra's heads with his numerous series of blows, it regenerated them too quickly. The monster wanted to kill this man as soon as possible. His breath was too dangerous that being near him was already fatal. Skylar had an invulnerability skill that should have protected him from any damage. But even in the fight against Varagoth, he was unable to block all of his powerful magic. But the Hydra was many times stronger than Varagoth, and it was impossible to block its attacks with invulnerability. And then the main character decided that he could run along this breath with the help of the Moonwalk and get straight to the monster's throat. From that moment on, the guy began to move as quickly as possible, moving faster through the Hydra's poisonous breath. And at one moment, a miracle happened. While Skylar was moving between safe zones, repeating the phrase faster and faster, the flame and poison emitted by the Hydra stopped, and time immediately slowed down. Hydra couldn't control his breathing intentionally, but none of Skylar's martial arts had the same effect. And finally, the main character realized that all this was happening for the same reason that his attacks were much stronger than they should have been with his level of martial arts and skills. The power of the essence is not the same as enhancing magic or martial arts. It is the power that allows one to change reality. According to his imagination and desire, he received an insight on how to use the power of the essence because it was a power that could change reality. Now the guy is able to control it as he wishes. As a result of the insight, the skill of the essence's power has increased, and this power allowed constellations and creatures that have reached the peak of existence to rule in the abyss. The constellations use this power to transform the abyss and create a kingdom and bring gifts and blessings to their followers. As long as the constellations have enough essence power, they can do anything. The Hydra was furious. She couldn't believe how the guy dared to do this. The monster screamed that she would not forgive this and would definitely kill him. This being had a gigantic soul and a strong will. With the current power of the essence, Skylar could not shake or change her will. But did he need to do this? Because his goal was to change the power of the protagonist's essence, and not the Hydra. The power of Skylar's essence infused his materialized Kai and became a sharp blade capable of cutting through both the Hydra's massive body and the poison that could seal divine regeneration. And the guy with great speed like a razor blade began to rush through the body of the Hydra, she could not believe that this was possible. The main character remained calm and did not give in to his emotions, because this was also training. And thanks to this power, the Hydra's heads could not regenerate, and they immediately lost to this man. They used Plan B, which was to hide in a cave and wait until regeneration returned to them again. But with so many heads like the Hydra, it was hard to come to a consensus, and someone didn't want to return to the cave with such a body, because it was a great humiliation. Neither fire, nor poison, nor brute force ever had any effect on the monster, but without regeneration, the Hydra quickly died, and for it it was a shame, because they lived for 10,000 years and never faced such humiliation. And at that moment, while the Hydra were arguing with each other, a sharp beam of light crashed into them straight from the sky. It was Skylar who bid farewell to the snake with a powerful fighting technique and admitted that she was indeed a strong opponent. After this battle, the main character greatly increased all the skills that were used during the battle, and the world began to resonate with him even more strongly. The main character inherited the Hydra's karma of divine regeneration, and now his invulnerable body is endlessly regenerating from this moment on. 
The guy noted that life was a strange thing, because being a martial arts master, he never thought that he would receive so many A skills. Now he only had to look at them. Even just one skill like that would make the boy an A rank hunter. But that no longer mattered once he decided to step beyond being a hunter and step onto the path of the constellation. The guy asked the Stone family if everything was okay with them and how they felt. Everything was fine and the Stone friend said that the guy had changed a lot. But this was to be expected because after several thousand years anyone can change just as much. The main character looked at the monster lying on the ground and asked his stone friend if he needed meat, bones, or scales, because he had to figure it out somehow. But the Hydra's body emitted a frightening poisonous aura, which required one to forget about it, because even touching the monster's body was dangerous. But this didn't stop the guy, and he quickly began to chop the snake into small pieces. There was so much meat that it was impossible to take it on the road, and he decided to eat the meat right before leaving. At that moment, the stone friend asked the protagonist to take one amulet as a gift, it was a token of gratitude for protecting his entire family from the Hydra. When the guy took the gift in his hand, he received a notification that in front of him was an artifact of the subspace necklace. Thanks to this necklace, the guy could place all the pieces of the Hydra directly into it. The bones of the Hydra could be used to create various items and weapons, and the Hydra's tough scales could be used to make armor if carefully crafted. The guy was delighted with such a generous gift because he could throw in a cauldron and even unenriched ore, and it was all very convenient. The main character said that during this time, he had accumulated a large amount of adamanta, and even the piece that his stone friend had given him remained. But the guy still did not know how to process this ore. Skylar already imagined that as soon as he learned how to melt this material, he would immediately make a frying pan and a cutting board. But the gifts from the stone friend did not end there, and he presented another stone. Ever since Skylar decided to become a constellation, he started seeing messages about other constellations, he could also see the amount of power that beings like Varagoth and the Hydra possessed. The reason he was able to use the subspace necklace was not because he had simply become smarter and more observant, but because he was a being capable of reaching the peak of existence. He could also hear the world talking to him. In his hands, he held unenriched orichalcum. It was a metal that emitted pure magical energy. And then the guy had a eureka moment, because he could make a knife and cutlery from orichalcum, and a frying pan and board from adamantine, and it was just the perfect plan. The stone friends thought that the guy probably had problems with his head, but they believed that he was a very kind and strong person. The guy held the necklace up and said that it couldn't hold things indefinitely just because it was a storage artifact. The main character decided that there was nothing he could do about it, and all he had to do was eat what was left. Skylar was a generous guy, and so he said that he would be happy to share the food with his friend. He had studied cooking for thousands of years while he was the owner of the demon pub, and his cooking skill was quite high. But even despite this, these ingredients were not so easy to handle. It was the meat of a powerful creature that had survived after refusing to become the avatar of the constellations, and in front of him was an ingredient that did not exist in the territory of the Lord of Blood and Battles. Consuming abyssal monsters gave power proportional to the consumed creature, but if cooked incorrectly, the dish would be deadly poisonous, but Skylar still refused to back down from this idea. For the guy, preparing dishes from complex ingredients was a kind of training. The main character tried to calm his stone friend and suggested that he try the dishes and not be afraid of it. The guy made tartary because it can be hard on the stomach to digest, and he thought it would do him good. But Onyx was also a powerful creature. He managed to escape from the Hydra, but it was simply impossible to avoid the terrible poisonous meat prepared by the main character. After trying a few pieces of fresh tartare, the stone friend immediately screamed from the taste and bright flashes of light began to come from his mouth and eyes. The stone friend quickly called the whole family and offered to try it, because it was incredibly delicious, and the guy was incredibly happy that his friend liked it. Skylar decided to share the secret of why there is no poison in the meat, all because the chief of the abyss took care of everything, and he could not poison his friend's family. And the guy immediately received a notification that the giant stone of snakes and his entire family decided to trust him and honor him. After this, a bright light began to form in his hands, and he, like a constellation, began to have followers. And at that moment, the power of the entity increased significantly, and the main character felt the energy coming from his snake friends. Skylar finally understood why the constellations wanted to increase their number of followers, because the real reason why the constellation was so interested in the Earth. It was a world with billions of potential followers, and any constellation that took over the land would gain the power of an entity capable of changing the entire abyss. The guy needed to quickly find a way to return to Earth before the future, 
and what the goddess predicted came true. Skylar sat on the ground and thought about his next steps. At one point, he raised his head and looked at his stone friend and was horrified. He couldn't understand what he had done wrong, why his body had grown so much. Had he fed it something wrong? He remembered that some foods should not be given to animals. For example, chocolate should not be given to dogs or onions to cats. Perhaps hydra meat is harmful to give to stone snakes and it harms their liver or something else. But Onyx tried to say that all this was not so, but it was all in vain, because he did not understand this language yet. Being close to a friend was cool, of course, but Skylar couldn't stay here because there was no way to stop the journey as a constellation, and this steadfastness in his personality was the reason the goddess chose him. The main character looked around and thought that there was definitely something in this area. On the ground, he noticed a drawing of some kind of creature and could not fully understand who it was. The silhouette looked very dangerous, especially the face that was depicted in the drawing. Then the guy wondered if any demon could cause him any harm, because after he had visited the territory of the Lord of Blood and Battles, he had lost all desire to fight demons. But now Onyx was trying to say that there was a demon that was much stronger than Varagoth and the Hydra, and it was here. And if all this is true, then the guy was looking forward to meeting him, and at that time he entered the territory of the owner of dreams and desires. The surrounding constellations were watching him. The avatars of the owner of dreams and desires found out about it and immediately headed towards the main character. The guy hoped that all this was a welcoming party. When all the avatars had arrived, they asked one question. Was there really an invincible training master in front of them? The guy answered that it was true. One of the avatars greeted the mister and added that his master wished to meet him. Suddenly, a notification appeared that one of the avatars had used soul seduction, and the power of the divine space arts key immediately resisted the seduction. The guy replied that it was too rude for a greeting and the avatar immediately apologized, because they are not able to control this ability. The avatars added that their weak abilities would not work on him and addressed him as a constellation, and this was the most pleasant thing he had heard in a long time. Then the main character asked what would happen if he refused to meet their master. They answered that in that case, they would simply be forced to let him go and swore that their master would not harm him. The guy was still curious about what they wanted from him and agreed to meet with him. On the way to the master, Skylar asked the Avatar if she had ever heard of the Earth, of a planet outside the abyss. The girl replied that she had once heard rumors where one constellation fought for the gates leading there. After these words, the guy suddenly shouted at the girl and asked her to tell him everything she knew. The girl added that she heard it from someone who heard it from someone who heard it from someone else, and she didn't know anything else about it. And perhaps her master might know something if the guy was really interested in the land. She was delighted and said that she had heard that there were a large number of souls on Earth and they would be able to help him in capturing her. But the guy replied that he didn't think of capturing it. He planned to stop the capture of the Earth by other constellations. The Avatar was surprised by this answer because for her, the guy turned out to be not only strong, but also noble. The guy knew that they were called nightmares, but they seemed to be good and sociable demons. Even if they couldn't control their seduction skill, they didn't seem dangerous. Suddenly, a demon appeared in front of the main character, who began to shout at him to give up all his wishes. He asked to be let go. He knew that the guy was going to be eaten and asked to share with him too, because these were sweet and pure desires. As the guy walked past this demon, he kept talking about his desire for endless training and strength, and that he couldn't let him go. The protagonist asked what that was just, but heard in response that they are nightmarish creatures that are weak to the desires of other people. Skylar said that it turns out that they live off of other people's desires, but he doesn't have a strong attraction to desires, and he will be fine without a loved one, and he doesn't need tasty food or a comfortable place to sleep. The demon could no longer stand this pure and unwavering desire to train. It was so tempting to her, and the taste was very sweet. The girl promised that she would keep all her desires under control, and the guy had nothing to fear. She asked him to trust her, because she is one of the most beloved avatars of the owner of dreams and desires. After some time, they reach the chamber of the master of dreams and desires, and they will finally see the master as soon as he enters inside. The guy asked if she would go with him, but the avatar was not a significant figure and could not take part in their conversation. The main character said that he was not a constellation, and since the girl told him everything here, he wanted her to go with him to the end. This touched the avatar greatly because Skylar was the first person who treated her so well. When the main character followed her, he thought that perhaps it would be more dangerous than he expected, and that he would have to use this avatar as a human shield. He was sure that the constellation would never want to lose its own dear avatar. 
This meeting was on the territory of another country, and many things could have happened despite the fact that Skyler was invited. He did not let down his guard, because the title of Invincible Training Master is not given to just anyone. When they entered the hall, the main character was overcome with the feeling as if he had just woken up, and he was surprised that the Avatar suddenly just fell asleep. And at that moment, a voice was heard that addressed the Avatar and said that he must be having a good dream about how he devours the desire of the protagonist. The guy turned around and asked if he was the master of dreams and desires. The girl replied that everything was correct and added that he was the constellation that had been putting on so many performances lately and that she had long wanted to meet him. The guy upset the girl by saying that he was not yet a constellation and that he still had a lot of work to do on this. But the little girl immediately replied that the one who has entered the path of the constellation can also be a constellation, since he is capable of the same things as they are. She added that this also applied to the main character, but couldn't he use the power of the essence, like the other constellations? At that moment, the guy had a question why the owner of dreams and desires looks like a child. Then Skylar began to slowly remember what exactly happened when he entered the constellation chamber. Hasn't he done enough since the guy has been wandering in the abyss for 10,000 years already? He refined the divine space art and reached the peak of martial arts and even reached a level that is higher than all existing ones. Does he really need to become a constellation when he should just be enjoying the peace of enlightenment? After these thoughts, the main character asked the question why they try to charm or seduce people and destroy their minds. Then the little child replied that this is the essence of dreams and desires, because the creatures that enter this room embody all desires and find peace, and it is very difficult to refuse such a gift if you are not a constellation. The girl added that the only thing he was not capable of was waking up by his own consent, to which the guy quickly exclaimed what she meant by the word waking up. The goddess of desires said that she was sure that the guy was confused, but she would not explain everything to him at that moment. Then the main character asked what she wanted to achieve from him. The little girl smiled sweetly and said that she would be happy to explain everything if he would join the alliance with them. The main character was not particularly surprised by this, because all the constellations thought about only one thing, well-being and power and who was next to them. The girl was amused by the answer. She laughed and added that the guy was indeed right. All the constellations are selfish and they cannot live differently. She said that selfishness does not always mean loneliness or remorse, but rather allows them to cooperate. Then Skylar guessed that she had decided that forming an alliance would be very beneficial for her. The goddess of desires replied that the guy was right. Mortals looked at them as gods. But it was not easy for them constellations either. Because if a constellation showed even the slightest hint of weakness, a strong constellation would attack it without hesitation, and therefore an alliance was necessary for them. Some constellations are not satisfied with a future that consists of survival. The destruction and devastation caused by the constellation's obsession with conquering lands will lead to despair, in which no desire can exist and nightmares will no longer have anything to feed on. The guy wondered if expanding the territory wouldn't solve this problem or if they could find slaves to take away their desires. The girl then replied that such an idea of a wish farm could only come from a constellation that was originally human, since constellations cannot enjoy unlimited potential like mortals. The girl turned to the boy, saying that just as he was now unable to feel remorse or complacency, she too could not freely control what was not related to her dreams and desires without the risk of losing the power of her essence and becoming weak. Nightmares require high-quality 3D desires, not those generated by fear and anger, but desires filled with ambition or a sense of achieving a world of abundance. The girl was only a nightmare god, and she couldn't do such a thing in the real world. The guy couldn't believe that they couldn't live without others, and it looked pretty strange. Skylar came to the conclusion that the goddess wanted to create an alliance of weak, altruistic constellations. But he wondered if she didn't think she had revealed too many weaknesses to him, and what if he turned out to be bad and greedy? The girl replied that she had thought about it, but thought that it would be easier to come to an agreement with him than with the other constellations of the abyss. The main character found it very strange to be so trusting in this decrepit world. But in reality, the guy was radiating a huge desire, but none of it was about conquest or power. The only thing they had was continuous training day after day, achieving perfection in martial arts and tasting various products in the abyss. The protagonist still had a few questions, because it seemed to him that all this sounded like a very good deal. The question he asked was what he would have to do if they formed an alliance. What responsibilities would he have? Skylar added that he is quite a busy person and may not be able to help her all the time. The girl laughed a lot and said that he was really an amazing constellation 
and wanted to learn about the responsibilities more than what benefit he would get from it. She said that as long as other constellations do not attack the Alliance, there is no need to do anything, there is no point in duties, and the constellations do not take part in what is not beneficial to them. The goddess of nightmares added that if he had to do something, then let him do it. The battle between the constellations dragged on for so long that sometimes it became very boring. It doesn't matter where Skylar is because they will always have time to come to each other's aid. After these words, the guy agreed to the deal and they both shook hands. He added that he was a newbie who had just started the path of becoming a constellation and was confident that the abyss was full of dangerous and false constellations and that the protagonist really thought correctly. After all, being in an alliance seemed safer than trying to cope with everything alone, and he thought he could get help in returning to Earth. At that moment, the guy saw the name of the alliance, and it sounded like the alliance of minor constellations. The main character didn't like the name much, because he had been away from society for too long. If Skylar didn't keep his promise in the alliance, it could affect his essence power. The girl asked if everything was okay and if he liked the name, but the guy quickly responded by saying that he thought the name was really good. Suddenly, a fiery whirlwind appeared behind the girl, which meant that the kitten of lava and magma greeted him with its paw. Kitten said that he would have treated him very well if he had become his avatar, but instead, he had made a foolish mistake by joining the Alliance of Minor Constellations. Then the boy remembered that they had talked earlier about the kitten being a member of the Minor Union of Constellations. Skylar didn't understand why the cat was talking to him telepathically when it was right in front of him. Then the girl said that usually constellations do not leave the territory where they are located, and thus the members of the Alliance arrange a meeting remotely. The guy compared it to a video conference that could take place on the ground and asked if other members of the Alliance should join now. Everyone laughed loudly, but only Skylar did not understand what was being discussed. As it turned out, there were only two members of the constellation in the Union. The kitten was angry with what the guy said because there was nothing wrong with the fact that there were only two of them, and he began to threaten the main character that he would not give him the gift he had prepared. The little animal turned to the boy and said that he had heard that he was collecting adamantine and orichalcum and offered to make the items he needed out of them. Then the girl screamed that the kitten was the most famous blacksmith in the abyss. He said that he could make a weapon for the protagonist as a gift for joining the alliance. The boy could not have expected that he would receive a gift for joining the union, but at the moment, he did not have enough oracleum and asked to take advantage of this chance when he had a little more. Then the kitten asked the mistress of dreams and desires if she had given him a present. The girl said that she thought that it would be much more difficult to come to an agreement with the guy, but he quickly accepted her offer before she could bring gifts. Kitten laughed that the guy didn't take advantage of such an offer, but Skylar replied that he could still leave their alliance if he didn't receive a gift. Then the girl made a small wave of her hands and added that the constellations are arrogant and selfish creatures by nature, and therefore, before their meeting, they prepared something that might interest the main character. In his hands, the boy held an A-rank martial arts scroll, Kai Vampirism, and several oracalcum ingots. The girl said that Kai Vampirism is a martial art created by nightmares, and she thinks it will suit him even if it has the effect of absorbing magical energy. There is no nightmare that could become a master of this art, unless it is someone like the protagonist who has achieved such greatness and she added that using magic is a much more effective way than learning martial arts. The guy asked how many days it took them to collect so many materials. It took more than tens of thousands of years to collect them. The guy really liked these gifts. He expressed great gratitude, and now he thought that it was possible to make the things he needed. The kitten of lava and magma excitedly asked the boy what kind of weapon or armor he wanted to create. He added that with this amount of materials, the guy will be able to create an epic sword or shield. Then the cat began to boast that he could create any unique design. He offered to create an indestructible shield from adamantine or a powerful sword from oracalcum. But the boy interrupted the great blacksmith, saying that this was not the equipment he wanted. The main character approached the cat and told him that he wanted kitchen utensils. Lava's kitten asked to answer seriously and could not believe that the guy wanted an adamantine frying pan and cutting board and to make a knife and dishes from oracalcum. But the guy was dead serious because from the moment he got the first adamantite nugget in the abyss, his dream still didn't change, and he wanted the best kitchen utensils with which he could cook any ingredient in the abyss. After the lava and magma kitten heard this, he simply pretended to be dead and did not want to answer anything. The guy didn't understand what was wrong because it felt like he was forcing him to do something terrible, but a promise is a promise, and the cat fulfilled his request with all his heart. Then the girl said that it was her time to answer his question and tell him what awakening was. Skylar found all this interesting because he was still an incomplete constellation and had only just begun to walk this path. 
When the boy defeated Varagoth and reached the level of master, he saw a message from the world, which said that his world resonance was becoming stronger, and the world was eager to hear his cry. And the demon at the last moment said that Skylar should become a constellation. The guy wondered if this meant that he was still a human with powerful martial arts and needed to take another step to become a constellation. But the girl replied that he was already a constellation because there is no such thing as an incomplete constellation or a newbie constellation. A constellation is a constellation. Then the main character asked what awakening was because she said that he still needed to awaken. But the girl meant that he still did not understand that it was a constellation. Skylar was very surprised by these words. The girl understood that in front of him was a special creature, even among the constellations. But the guy was still tormented by this question. Because what did she mean by the word special? Was it all because of his martial arts? And if so, then the problem was that he didn't know how to use magic. The girl tried to calm the boy down by saying that she didn't mean that, but that mortals very rarely become constellations. Then the goddess told the story of how she was born as a constellation, that the power of existence of dreams and desires was released by nightmares and came together to create her. This was her true form as the mistress of dreams and desires, since most of the other constellations were the same, such as the Lord of Blood and Battles, as well as the Kitten of Lava and Magma. They are constellations from birth, and for a creature that believes that being a constellation is natural, but for a girl, the fact that she does not understand that he is a constellation surprises and irritates her at the same time. The goddess of desires simply asked the guy to adopt the fact that he is a constellation, and that's all. After all, he had overcome such a difficult path to becoming a constellation. Is he really disappointed that there are no more difficult trials ahead of him? And at that moment, the guy acknowledged the girl's words and said that he was a constellation, and suddenly a bright flash of light enveloped the main character. The world resonance was activated. The whole world accepted his cry. As a constellation invincible training master, he can use the power of the constellation. The world asked to see how a new star opens its eyes in the dark depths of the abyss. While the new star was being reborn, a bloody battle was taking place in one of the dimensions of the abyss. One of the avatars tried to fight the monster, but his attacks were too useless to defeat it. But suddenly he saw a notification that the invincible training master was watching their battle. And after that, the invincible training master gave him a blessing, thanks to which he was able to defeat the ruthless monster. The avatar was happy about this and swore that he would never disappoint him. Meanwhile, Skylar was watching the battle using a small amount of essence power. He gave a great blessing and even sent a few messages. But the girl asked what he was doing with someone else's avatar, because he was now in the alliance. And if it was an avatar of another constellation, he would have problems and warned the main character to be careful next time. The guy was puzzled by this because now if he wanted to do something, he would have to think carefully first. Avatars are the most important factor for the existence of the constellation. Any influence on other people's avatars can be regarded as a provocation. Skylar could now get an answer to any question just by thinking about it. The guy thought about the fact that before he didn't even realize that he was already a constellation and continued to rush from side to side, trying to become the strongest. Even though the protagonist was lost and wandering in the abyss, he accepted it as the goddess's training and even believed that the magical storm was a convenient way to travel, as well as a training tool. He really didn't think about anything, even if he did. He thought it was an incredible training. But the little girl reminded him not to forget that the gaze of the constellation is distant and incredible. She added that if the guy had an avatar, he could try to concentrate on it. But the main character didn't have an avatar yet. Skylar became curious about where his friend was now and decided to take a peek at him and made sure that he was okay now. The dream goddess said that he could also expand the range of vision using the power of essence, and it was also possible to accumulate more essence power than the limit allowed, so there was no need to conserve it. Based on this, constellations can use personal avatars to explore the abyss, the so-called scout avatars, or observe through the eyes of allied avatars so that vision could be shared between the alliance. And since they were all in the same alliance, they could share eyes with each other. And the girl added that there are places that not everyone can see, these are places where nightmares are contained, and she can hide certain areas if she does not want them to be seen. The guy was very interested in what the goddess of nightmares was really hiding. She gave an example that in order to greet the guy, she sent him one of the best warriors, who had great self-control. Otherwise, it is difficult for nightmares to control their own desires. Then the guy remembered their first meeting and seemed to guess what she was talking about. The main character had no more questions, and he thanked the girl for all the explanations. 
The girl was glad to meet the constellation, sincerely expressing gratitude. The goddess also warned that since Skylar had only recently become a constellation, he should clash with others less, despite the fact that he fights well. In the fight between constellations, the one with more avatars and greater essence power has an advantage. The guy remembered that he had one last, most important question that he wanted to ask the goddess. Did she know anything about the Earth? The girl slowly began to remember, and it seems she once heard about it, that it is a planet that is outside the abyss. Many powerful constellations are waiting for the portal to open there because there are a large number of souls on Earth, which are very rare in the abyss. Skylar admitted that he only asked the question because he came here from Earth. He thought that everything was not so bad because thanks to the girl's explanation, he finally understood that the constellations that arrived on Earth were only looking at each other, but did not collide. This is because they would only become weaker if they fought, and some cunning constellation could simply take control of the souls and defeat the constellations that were fighting. And so instead of just fighting, they decided to increase the number of their followers. The goddess said that the guy was really lucky, because when the portal opened, there were relatively good constellations nearby. The girl added that evil and cruel constellations will not come to a common agreement and will simply try to seize power by force even when they have something to lose. But this is their nature. The little girl was sure that he was nervous about leaving his home planet as a constellation that came from nowhere. She added that it would also be nice to have followers in their constellation alliance who are the souls of the earth. Suddenly, the guy waved his hands up and with a sharp movement cut off the long braids and made the same appearance as before. The reason the boy's hair grew so suddenly was because he became a constellation, and the changes in his essence were reflected in his appearance. The girl asked if he had decided to return to Earth no matter what, and not forget his mortal origin. The guy replied that it was not that at all. It was just that long hair really interfered with training. At the end of the meeting, the goddess decided to give him advice since he was planning to return to Earth. She said that if the portal to Earth was open, and the nearest constellations were watching him, she didn't think it would be a good idea to openly reveal that he was a constellation. After all, even the good constellations are hostile to him. Even if these are constellations capable of fighting for the land, they are much stronger than them. And no matter how good the constellation is, they will not close their eyes to the fact that they can lose the soul they owned. The goddess asked him to hide the fact that he was a constellation and not to use the power of the entity, because then the constellations would not take their eyes off him if they found out that he had returned back to Earth. She suggested mixing with the ordinary inhabitants of the Earth and then quietly and carefully acquiring followers. They will become souls that accept the essence of the main character, and so the constellations on Earth will discover the loss too late. The guy thought about it very seriously because he never thought about becoming an actor or a star. The girl objected, because isn't becoming a hero who destroys monsters enough? The guy replied that they are called hunters, and if you think about it, famous hunters also have fans just like he had an idol whom he previously perceived as a fellow hunter. Skylar told that there is a constellation on Earth that knows about him. The goddess thought that perhaps it would be a good idea to join him with them. It would not hurt to increase the strength of their alliance. The girl became interested in who the guy was talking about and found out whether he could be trusted and how he found out about him. Then Skylar tried to tell the story of how he fell into the abyss after meeting the goddess of Libra as briefly as possible and as simply as possible. No matter how the guy tried to embellish this story, it didn't help and the girl considered this story bad. The goddess of fear said that she had heard of this constellation. Then the guy shouted that he guessed that even in the abyss, the ability to see the future is not so common. Although it seems that this is not so, but she could have a plan. The girl replied that she had heard that she was a constellation that constantly made fun of her own actions by misunderstanding the prophecy. She added that predicting the future is very difficult, and what is the point of prophecies if you can't benefit from it? and she didn't fully understand whether this constellation would somehow help their alliance. Considering the fact that she tried to stop the evil constellations, it is likely that she is collaborating with others, and this will not be enough to join their alliance. Then the kitten said that even though she seemed so stupid, she could share her visions and they could help her stop them. And then they asked the training master to ask the guy to join their alliance since he was returning to Earth. They were sure that she would help them, but they were worried about how she would react to the fact that the main character had already become a constellation. The guy needed to find a way to contact her, and he asked if his friends knew where she could be. But he could not get an exact answer, because no one suspected or knew her name, and moreover, where she was. Skylar has awakened as a constellation and joined a formidable alliance, but he is no closer to returning to Earth. 
The guy felt that he had to find her personally because she was a key figure, because the more creatures knew about her, the closer he was to the Earth. On the way back to the constellation, one demon flew up and said that she would be happy to accompany him through the owner's territory. She asked if he was planning to return back to Earth, but the guy firmly replied that he still had important things to do here. Lava Kitten was currently making his gear, and the guy should stay here until he was done. The girl replied that she remembered those valuable minerals that the main character had been collecting for so long, and was absolutely sure that if the great blacksmith kitten made it, then this equipment would become legendary. The guy couldn't wait to receive this equipment, which would fulfill his long-awaited desires. The girl asked the constellation where she should take him, because this territory is full of beautiful places. The guy knew where he wanted to go. He told him that he heard from the owner about the Fountain of Enlightenment, about the place for their training to learn to control their own desires. If the main character has to wait here, then he must also undergo training that is only possible here. The girl laughed loudly because these were the words of a true master of training. The demon told a story about how many nightmares used this place in the old days, but since the owner was born, it became forbidden. It was all because it was incredibly dangerous here, and many had heard about how most of the nightmares went crazy during training. Then the guy took the well of enlightenment in his hands. The essence of the training was to drink water from the well. However, if this were really the case, then it would not have been sealed. The stronger the desire of the person drawing out the water, the heavier the water becomes. You can try to meditate and get rid of these desires, but this will not reduce the amount of water. If you let go, you can return to Earth. Doesn't the main character want to return to the old gym and touch the old barbels and dumbbells? Doesn't the guy miss spicy chili ramen or what happened in the latest issue of the novel he read or the Batman and Superman movie? Isn't he interested in all of that? Then the girl's voice was heard, that so much time had passed since they broke up, and it did not happen on a good note. But their love had not passed, and they had already stopped hating each other. If the protagonist lets go of this rope, they can be together again. His friends watched this and believed that even if he was a master of training, it would not be easy for him, because this well excites and intensifies desires, and the bucket becomes many times heavier. The kitten asked if the master would be okay, but the girl added that the constellations were on a completely different level than nightmares, and at least he wouldn't just go crazy. The goddess was interested in what kind of illusions were tormenting him, and there was probably something incredible there. But at this moment, the training master continued to undergo tests and hold the bucket of water. When the others from the Alliance looked at the guy, they were horrified and could not believe their eyes at what was happening there. At this time, the main character was training with this bucket. He was working out to strengthen his muscles and doing several repetitions in a row. He used the weight of his own desires and thus got rid of them. The guy was addicted to training, and it is not surprising that thanks to this he became a constellation. They heard the boy ready to do five more sets for the workout, and the kitten muttered that this was too much. The essence of the training was that you had to pull out a bucket of water as heavy as your desires, and the one who wanted to pull the bucket out of the well would see illusions corresponding to his desires, and the water would become heavier. The demon added that the constellations say that many nightmares have gone mad trying to complete this training. She asked if the main character had any problems, but he was absolutely fine. He just found a good exercise machine for the first time in a long time. The guy thought that most people couldn't lift a bucket, and it was such a weak temptation. Movies with Superman and Batman were not very good. As for ramen, you need to constantly monitor your diet during training. Starting from scratch with an ex-girlfriend, the guy has long had such a thing as the awareness that if they get together, then nothing will change. All these illusions were too weak, and this machine is simply an improved squat with weights. Then the goddess was ready to swear that there are no creatures without desires, and the constellations are no exception. The girl added that the constellations are weaker in terms of restraining their own desires, and why would an omnipotent being restrain them? This is a constellation that has a good foundation, and that's not counting its fighting skills. Is it possible that only a constellation that was previously mortal has this power? Skylar spent most of the day exercising with the Well of Enlightenment. He could do light cardio if he cleared his heart, and strength training if he gave in to his desires. And the rest of the time he rested and worked on tactics, sparring with a new friend. The girl thought that it would be problematic for the main character to stay here for a long time, but apparently he had a good time here. Then, the goddess added that he was a person who had the potential to grow avatars and found his own kingdom, and the guy was very interested in these words. The girl replied that everything was correct, because first of all he was a master of training and could raise avatars. She thanked the guy for the productive training because thanks to it, her avatar became much stronger. At this time, the kitten of lava and magma lay without strength, and screamed that he would not do anything like that again. 
and now he could take the items. The couple looked at the created objects and were pleasantly surprised. The girl believed that this was the end of his carefree training. The guy was holding an orichalcum knife created by the famous constellation blacksmith, thanks to which he could easily prepare any ingredient, and the sharp blade could also be used as a weapon. Then the main character decided to test the new tool and hit it straight into the ground. And from the impact, there was a powerful surge of energy that blinded everyone. The girl screamed for him to stop, because if he wasn't careful with it, he would destroy everything around. When it was time for the utensils made of adamantine, the girl and the cat were already ready for it. All the dishes were right in the corner and the guy decided to check them with the accumulated materialized Kai. But after a powerful blow, not a single scratch appeared on them. And at that time, the kitten boasted that this utensil was stronger than even magical armor. The protagonist turned to the kitten and said that he would like them to be a little bigger. But the cat replied that it was the fault of the one who provided such materials. But the guy thanked the cat for his excellent work anyway. Skylar's short break in the nightmare world was over. Even though he was human when he entered here, he left already as a constellation. When the boy left, all the demons shouted and asked that he visit their kingdom again someday and that they would eagerly await him as well as that wonderful dish. But why did the invincible training master remember the nightmares as a master of dishes? And all because he made some food with the help of new items and offered to try the meat from the hydra. The first time the guy decided to demonstrate his culinary skills, his friends didn't believe that they were about to try hydra meat. The main character suggested calling another nightmare because he had so much meat that he made as much as he could and making it in portions like in a cafe was incredibly difficult. The owner screamed that she could run away if she thought she couldn't eat it because hydro meat contains a deadly poison and there was no need to expose the body to such danger. But when the girl tried this dish, she was incredibly happy. Because it was incredibly tasty, she felt how every spoonful of the dish warmed her. And at that moment, every nightmare wanted to try this dish. The obsession caused a little fuss, and the situation was resolved thanks to the intervention of the hostess. The guy could practice cooking, increase the power of the essence, but he was a little uncomfortable, because in the end, because of him, the hostess's avatars staged this ugly scene. The main character thought that apparently ruling a kingdom is not so easy. At that moment, the guy entered the territory of the serpent bearer of plague and darkness. He realized that this territory really suited him. Then the guy decided to use a little bit of essence power so that this gloomy guy wouldn't bother him and hid the essence from the whole world and immediately disappeared from the visibility of the constellations. Once he did this, he realized that the world had become so quiet and calm and he couldn't believe that he was being blown away by a stream of messages from the constellation because he couldn't do something so simple. And at that moment, the serpent bearer of plague and darkness ordered all the avatars to find the invincible master of training, and when they find him, not to fight alone if they could not defeat him at all. Suddenly, the main character met a skeleton who approached him, said that he had entered the territory of his master, and such impudence would not go unpunished, but his master was magnanimous, and he offered to become the avatar of his master. If the guy joins him, he will forget about this disrespect and recognize him as a valuable subordinate. Then the skeleton turned once more to the training master and said that if he refused this offer, then his master would come and deal with him. But the guy only heard the smell of rot around him, and he asked this owner to show himself right in front of him. He shouted loudly so that the messenger of plague and darkness would stop hiding behind the avatar and show himself. The main character did not understand why the skeleton was still here, what it was doing here, and why it could not call its owner. Then Skylar decided that since he wasn't showing up, he would force the skeleton to do it and punched him with a powerful blow. The guy continued to insist that the serpent bearer of plague and darkness show himself to him and stop hiding behind a weak avatar. And if he didn't show himself, he would consider him a coward who couldn't even protect his own territory. The owner and the cat were stunned that the main character decided to start a war between the constellations. They tried to stop him, saying that it was madness. Then the boy remembered that they could be watching him, and the mistress said that challenging a mid-ranking constellation to a fight was reckless. But Skylar did it because he had to get back to his roots. After all, even after he fell into the abyss, the guy was never a force to be reckoned with. Being a weak man, he always fought against hostility. From the point of view of the powerless, he did everything he could. However, after he became a constellation, nothing changed. He always hid from the older constellations and, like the last coward, remained in neutral territory away from the prying eyes of the constellations. The protagonist has lost the meaning of fighting and must now follow his own path. 
living like a constellation, putting his own life on the line and fighting the messenger of plague and darkness. The fact that his opponent was a constellation didn't change anything. Skylar's friends screamed loudly because the main character's opponent actually heard him and came to fight. The Ophiuchus of plague and darkness came to the protagonist at his request, and the kitten screamed that it was too late to run. A mid-rank constellation, the messenger of plague and darkness, came with an army of skeletons. He appeared before the avatars and those doomed to die. The messenger of plague and darkness thought that his opponent was more insane than he expected. The messenger did not understand why a constellation much weaker than him challenged him. The constellation turned to the guy and said that if he was defeated, he would be completely destroyed, and even if he got involved in this battle, nothing would come of it. But if he lost, he would lose a lot. However, if the messenger of plague and darkness does not accept his challenge, then his status and reputation will greatly decline. The creature approached the protagonist and asked how he dared to challenge him. But Skylar, without further ado, despite being the first to challenge, did not let down his guard and immediately began the first battle with the constellation with a powerful blow. The guy understood that the difference in strength between them was too great and he had to end it quickly, using all his power. But if the fight dragged on, he would definitely lose. In one blow, he put all the power of the cosmic fist and added a little bit of essence power. This blow was truly powerful. No one could have expected such an outcome of the battle. Born as a constellation, he felt pain for the first time, as if his essence was being torn apart. Other constellations, including the Messenger of Plague and Darkness, rarely fought personally because it was too dangerous. The Messenger did not understand what kind of technique this was, why this magic was so crazy, and how it could even be called magic. Skylar kept throwing punches, his attacks were working, and he couldn't pass up this chance to win. The main character did not understand why the messenger pretended to be weak, perhaps in order to attack unexpectedly later. Everyone around watched the bright flash in the sky, because it was a battle of the constellations, although the glow looked more like the end of the world. No one understood how such a pitiful constellation could resist their inimitable master, the messenger of plague and darkness. Even though the guy had carried out a large number of successful attacks, he still smelled the rot and knew that things weren't going to be easy. But as soon as he got closer to the constellation, he heard it loudly start shouting that it surrendered. The skeleton began to repeat that he had lost this fight and was asking the main character to stop. But the guy couldn't believe that he was actually giving up and continued to deliver crushing blows. And then the constellation swore that his territory and all his avatars, he gives everything to him and swears by his own life. Skylar's partners were very surprised by this. They could not have expected such an outcome of the battles. The kitten joined the conversation and said that he was really giving up, because constellations cannot lie about swearing their own lives. But the main character did not understand what he meant and why the constellation would give up. Then the guy decided to end it and finish the fight. The messenger of plague and darkness swore his own life and submitted to him. Several skills were activated, and the protagonist's power increased incredibly, and he realized that from this moment on, he could continue to fight. After all, his martial arts work even on constellations. And at that moment, the guy began to see and feel rivers of pus and buildings of rotten tumors, a kingdom of plague and darkness. He felt each avatar, his new kingdom and new avatars, were waiting for a new king. But the guy wasn't very inspired by all this, and he said that he was giving the kingdom back and asked him not to thank him, because he didn't need his kingdom, because the fight with him was enough for him. The Herald of Plague and Darkness was confused as he watched Skylar walk away. Battles between constellations are very dangerous, both sides are at risk, and the winner takes absolutely everything from the loser. This is done to prevent any future threat from the loser, as the complete erasure of the loser's existence was common practice. But he spared his life and left his kingdom with the avatars. Although he was glad about it, there was a feeling of loss. The kitten turned to Skylar and thought that leaving the kingdom and the avatars was a big mistake. But the main character didn't care, because he wouldn't be able to rule it anyway. Through training with the nightmare, he learned a new technique that allowed him to get so close to the enemy that they could not use magic and not give them a chance to use the power of the essence and then defeat them. And at that moment, the guy realized how strong he was now because he could fight with a constellation even much stronger than him. And the main character began to visit different territories and the feeling of fear of the new enemy completely disappeared. One of them told the main character that he would not be defeated so easily as a rotten weakling and asked the guy to prepare to face his entire kingdom. Right in front of him was a mid-level constellation, the one who turns back time. At that moment, the good giant fighter and martial arts master skill was activated, 
which was what Skylar had hoped for, and vowed to defeat him with all his might. Hearing rumors of what happened to the Herald of Plague and Darkness, they prepared for all sorts of scenarios. In other words, Skylar now had to fight all the avatars of the kingdom. It took the guy 200 years before he stood before the constellation and won. Some constellations already knew Skylar well, and in a battle with them, warned that there would be too little sense and offered to find a compromise right away. But there was no talk of any deal, because the guy wanted only one thing, victory over the Avatar. And after 150 years of battles, Skylar emerged victorious. Many mid-level constellations said that the invincible training master was sinful, but the guy didn't want to hear it and immediately went on the attack. In this battle, the unshakable alliance destroyed him thanks to the power of the lava kitten and magma that complemented him, Skylar defeated him in six hours. The joyful goddess and the cat were relaxing carefree and did not envy the battle constellations and other high-level constellations. The girl was sorry that she still hadn't found a way to return to Earth, but it seemed the guy was in no hurry to do so. He hadn't been on his own territory for a long time and continued to improve in the field of cooking. Cooking in the abyss had turned from a mid-level skill into a high-level skill, and his essence power had increased incredibly. The boy thought that if he met a constellation, he would fight it. But if he met a monster, he would immediately eat it. The guy was sitting alone and thinking about when he would be able to return to Earth, and suddenly a portal opened in front of him. It was a gate that accidentally appeared in the abyss. For Skylar, it became a way to meet a new opponent. But who knows? Maybe these gates led straight to the ground. It's like any lottery. If you don't try, you won't know. When the guy entered the portal, he immediately found himself among massive mountains and green forests, the main character could not believe that he actually won this lottery and ended up on Earth. Skylar thought that this was all true, and he decided to find people first and noticed a village in the distance. It didn't look like some big city. But when the main character came to this village, he was surprised because goblins stood in front of him. Then he thought whether it was possible that during his absence, people disappeared and goblins appeared. Then the kitten said that although it looked like Earth, it was not it. He was on the planet of goblins. This planet was called Ephesus, or otherwise Goblin Paradise. Even though the guy saw goblins in the dungeons from time to time, he thought they were just monsters. But contrary to his expectations, they were able to create a real village. Although the goblin kingdom looked like Earth, it was much closer to the abyss, which meant that portals appeared here much more often. The Ephesian goblins had been fighting the monsters from the abyss for much longer than the humans, and so the system for fighting monsters was much better than that of humans but this system only worked when they encountered normal monsters. And suddenly, their world came to an end, because before them stood a wolf devouring planets, the appearance of this monster was commensurate with the power of the constellation. And the dwarves immediately screamed that the end had come for them and Ephesus would be destroyed. But the goblins were brave and tried, despite the fact that it was dangerous to get closer to the enemy, because their king was the strongest magician of the hilt. And the brave goblin king, who was sitting on his tame dragon, was rushing straight towards the formidable enemy. And if he did not fight him, then how could he look his own people in the eyes? The goblin was no coward and would never run away from his duty. He was Odaigon, the goblin king and the strongest magician of the hilt. He shouted that even if this was the end for the hilt, the goblin would at least leave a scar on it that the beast would never forget. But suddenly a bright blue flash appeared above the beast. Odaigon could not understand who it was and where this light came from. Skylar surprised everyone with his spectacular appearance. He only had one chance, because in terms of combat power, this wolf is comparable to a mid-level constellation. But it is not a constellation, since its existence is not focused on one thing. He had the opportunity to stop him right now, this second, and he used everything he had. And indeed, the attack was so powerful and strong that the planet-devouring wolf was immediately defeated. The protagonist was glad that fortunately for him, everything went according to plan. Several skills were activated, and his essence power was significantly increased. Skylar always felt a sense of crisis when faced with constellations and monsters comparable to him. Powerful creatures that mortals dare not confront have an incredibly low pain threshold. The kitten said that such strong creatures have practically no experience in fighting opponents equal to them, and he praised the guy for using such a strategy. The protagonist thanked the cat, and said that if he had withstood his last attack a little longer or had been prepared in advance, then this battle would have lasted for several centuries. At that moment, the main character saw surprised goblins in front of him, who stood and looked at him in surprise. The guy hoped that they would not attack him especially after seeing this battle. 
Then one of the goblins got much closer to Skylar, and this made the guy panic a little. But the goblin fell to his knees before him and said that when the other constellations were busy and doing nothing, he was the only one who came here and helped his people. He bowed low to him and said that he was now his god and his master. From that moment on, the goblin king Odigan swears allegiance to him, and all the goblins who were there bowed their heads before the main character. Thanks to this, the goblin kingdom of Ephesus was now under his control, and his constellation power increased depending on the number of souls that worshipped him, and the world began to resonate with him. The power of the constellation was increased. The power of the constellation was awakened, and the boy obtained the skill of the constellation of the territory belonging to the invincible god, and now he has become a middle-rank constellation. The kitten of lava and magma told the boy that he was so filled in his own mind that it would be nice if everything happened the same way with the earth. But the guy didn't think that people would be so simple, because the earth is different from this planet, where there are only a few hundred goblins. After all, if Skylar defeats the huge monster on earth, he will simply become famous. And that will be all, because people are not like goblins, they will not obey because the reality is that they are constantly trying to destroy and subjugate others. As the boy was leaving the scene, the Goblin King caught up with him and shouted that he would go with him and would always stand by his side. The main character addressed the Goblin by name and he was very grateful to him for remembering his name. Skylar said that he was going into the abyss and that it would be difficult for mortals like him to follow him. But the Goblin was not stopped by this and he would follow him even into the darkest depths of the abyss. Odigon added that he was the King of the Goblins, and was not like the dwarves who broke their own promise because of difficulty. And if he and his people did not repay the Savior, they would live with even greater regret. The protagonist noticed that magical power surrounded his entire body. Even compared to earthly hunters, he was a powerful force to be reckoned with. The boy agreed to the goblin's offer and said that his abilities as a magician would be very useful to him, but warned him not to regret it later. The goblin asked what his master wanted to find in the abyss, and then the guy told him about a planet called Earth and asked if he had ever heard of it. But the Goblin King heard this name for the first time. They set off on a long journey because they must arrive on time, because most likely she is too far away. This story has been up until today about how Skylar became an invincible training master and how the Goblin King became his subordinate. The Goblin and the boy looked at the meat and thought about what to do with the large pieces of animals. But there was no more room in the spatial necklace, and then the Goblin suggested using spatial magic. At the moment when Skylar was unloading huge pieces of meat, the dwarf turned to the owner, saying that a strong magical storm was starting nearby, and they should find shelter. The guy looked at the storm and said that he had been waiting for it for a long time in order to move a long distance. The protagonist added that he had spent too much time fighting three monsters at once, and now had to use the storm to move faster. A thought the goblin didn't really like. They were standing right in front of a magical storm, and the goblin was ready to do anything for his master and would go where his master would go, even if he died. Odigan looked at the continent-sized piece of land that was destroyed in an instant. Although a magical storm was not that rare in the abyss, but this particular one was very strong. The goblin asked the guy if he had ever traveled using a magical storm, and the protagonist replied that if done correctly, it was a very fast and good way to travel in the abyss, and also very convenient. Odigan said that even the constellations avoid it, but he will follow it to the ends of the earth. But suddenly the magical storm began to disappear. The magical power began to concentrate and transform. Since the size of this magical storm was too big, it would produce a lot of byproducts and disappear. But the guy didn't understand what kind of byproducts the goblin was talking about. Odigan then revealed that many of the places in the abyss were actually byproducts of a magical storm, and that this magical storm would leave the dungeon. A dungeon is a part of the abyss that has special rules, and some dungeons are connected to other places. The monsters of the abyss appear exactly there, and if you don't deal with them, they will simply wipe everything off the face of the earth. One such appeared in Nevada, USA, in the Mojave Desert. This dungeon is called the Mirror Illusion of Chaos and had an entry limit of about 10 people. There were two weeks and 11 hours left before the new monsters would come out, and people had no information about which monsters would appear again. It was the sacred right of humans to name things. But since when did they have a dungeon with monsters and constellations? According to the Federal Dungeon Analysis Department, this dungeon was ranked C. Fortunately, this dungeon rank was quite popular. If this dungeon rank is popular, then B rank hunters will appear and the danger will be significantly reduced. And the rewards here were quite large. 
It was at this moment that a team of hunters named Gangster received permission to enter the portal and were already on their way. The team of hunters named Gangster was recently created by the son of the founder of the Parker Foundation. It was the most controversial team. Since the magic and monsters of the abyss entered the earth, people's lives have changed greatly. The core of monsters with magical power has become the most environmentally friendly way to obtain energy on earth. And thanks to the connection of the earth with the abyss, humanity has received a new environmentally friendly way to obtain energy. In addition, other parts of the monsters were also very useful. And thanks to all this, the level of biology and other sciences rose greatly. With these many opportunities, the Parker Foundation quickly began to develop and a pharmaceutical company specializing in artifacts from major players in the abyss industry, all of which were owned by the Parker Company. And the leader of the gangsters was Richard Parker. He was a B-rank hunter and was also the youngest son of the second chairman of the Parker Foundation. When his team arrived, they immediately began an attack on the dungeon called the Mirror Illusion of Chaos. The young men began to check the list of participants and said that they saw that there were eight people on his team, but only ten could enter this dungeon. One of the participants on the list had an E-plus rank, which meant he was only a newbie. But the guy was too confident of victory and said that he had seven C-rank hunters, and he, and with such a B-rank hunter, it shouldn't be a problem. No one was against it, and they continued on their way. E-rank hunters can only use one or two circles of magic at most. They won't even be able to cause any damage to monsters from the C-rank dungeon. The dungeon with this rank contained large rewards, and if one was lucky, one could obtain items worth tens of millions of dollars. Usually, these rewards were not given to E-rank hunters, who did not make a significant contribution to the battle. After the final roll call, permission was given to enter the Mirror Illusion of Chaos, and the team was warned to make their final preparations. One of the newbies had high hopes for the leader, but the leader asked him not to worry and just do the job he was hired to do. The guys thought that he must be a porter for the leader, and he just hired him for money. The newbie won't get a reward until they return from the dungeon. And the whole squad, one after another, began to pass through this portal. At the moment when the squad had fully entered, the status of the dungeon changed to the fact that there were currently battles taking place there, and the countdown was temporarily suspended. When everyone entered, suddenly there was a loud explosion, and a powerful stream of energy came from underground. All the workers and soldiers were shocked by this phenomenon. One of the workers shouted that most likely monsters would crawl out now, and it would be the end for them all. But as it turned out, it was just that the dungeon had grown in size. And then the scientists assumed that there must have been an error in assessing the dungeon's rank. And it was not a C-rank dungeon, but an A-rank dungeon. The workers wondered what would happen to the gangster team now, because they were now in complete danger. But it was too late to do anything, and they did not have time to do anything. When the team went inside, they found that they were in a ruin-type dungeon and were very happy, since last time they were in a swamp-type dungeon. At this point, the man ordered that a report be sent to the dungeon control team, and added that after someone sent the report, they should call the Parker Foundation and report it just in case. But they understood that even if they followed the instructions and informed everyone, the chance of saving them would be minimal. At this time in the dungeon, a newcomer pointed out to his leader that he noticed some creatures in the distance. It was a huge horde of monsters that were running towards the squad. The first day of the raid of the group of hunters in the dungeon was very suspicious, because it was very good, much better than the dark and slimy underground tunnel. This location resembled a temple that had been destroyed. Then one of the soldiers suggested finding the exit first, while the others would try to find the boss. The team captain warned his soldiers to be sure to look between the ruins, as monsters could jump out from around the corner, and allowed them to use enhancement magic to scout out the area. One of the soldiers reminded the captain that there were two exits from the dungeon. The first connected to the outside world, and the second to kill the boss guarding the center of the dungeon. And in C-rank dungeons, instead of looking for an exit, it's better to find the boss right away. When one of the soldiers was looking for a way out, he unexpectedly found a monster that was located not far from the squad. The squad captain ordered them to line up and not to get nervous, because their movements would be very easy to predict. But in front of them were F-rank monsters that weren't worth a dime. The monster surrounded them from different sides, and one of the soldiers shouted that the magic of the second circle would be quite enough for them. The flaming arrows attacked the monsters, but they continued to advance and advance. The fighters were confident that they could handle them because they were ordinary ghouls and could be stopped with just a couple of area of effect spells. After several shots towards the monsters, the fighters' mana was depleted, but the monsters continued to advance towards them. One of the fighters turned to the captain and said that if this continued, they would not last long, and at most they would be able to throw a couple more flaming arrows and that would be the end of it. 
but the guy told me not to worry, because he would take care of it himself. C-rank dungeons can only be cleared if there is at least one C-rank or higher hunter in the party. With Richard Parker, a B-rank hunter, it was a piece of cake. However, the gang members realized that something was wrong, and this time it would not be easy. In the same location, a bright flash of light appeared, and at that very second, Skylar appeared along with his new friend Odaigon. After such teleportation, the goblin suddenly felt sick, and he apologized to his owner and immediately cast a spell against nausea. The Goblin King was greatly surprised that after going through all this and moving through time and space, the main character remained calm, as expected from his master. As soon as they landed, the guy smelled something rotten and assumed that there were ghouls nearby and ordered his partner to check if this was true. The Goblin shouted that magic is a really convenient thing, and if the main character needs to learn it, he will gladly help him with it. The guy asked Odaigon to check the area he had just flown over, and thanks to the fact that the constellations can see through the eyes of their own avatars, he could see what his partner saw. The guy asked to check one of the places, especially check in the shadow of the building right in front of the goblin, and examine everything carefully. As he got closer, the goblin noticed the dungeon food rations for C-rank hunters, but warned the owner that there were some symbols there and that it all looked very unusual. The goblin added that if you look closely, you can tell that it was used to wrap a special magical weapon most likely made by the same tribe that built this temple. Suddenly, Odaigon shouted out that the master was seeing this, because he was circling right above a huge horde of ghouls. There were several thousand of them. The Goblin King suggested using the Seventh Circle's area of effect spell to wipe out the pathetic ghouls in one fell swoop, turning them into ashes, so they could take care of the boss who was hiding somewhere. But the guy asked the goblin to calm down, because if there were ghouls crowding there, doesn't that mean that they surrounded someone or something? and Skylar immediately rushed to help, to save those who were trapped. The protagonist thought that if his intuition was correct, then those inside would probably lead them to the ground. When the main character discovered the monsters, he deprived them of their heads with powerful blows per second. He added something that they found in the square, it was earthly food, and asked Odaigon to transform into something with the help of magic. Because if he appeared in this form in front of those who were stuck here, they would have a lot of problems. Not all goblins in the abyss appear to be adequate creatures. Hunters from the earth have already become accustomed to meeting goblins in the dungeons. Odaigon couldn't believe that he could be considered a dungeon monster. But despite this, the Goblin King fulfilled Skylar's request and used the magic of the Sixth Circle, polymorphism. And right in front of the guy, a handsome and tall guy descended from the sky. The guy could believe in such a power of transformation. Odaigon didn't want to brag, but he added that among the goblins, he was known for his incredible beauty. The guy said that now he looks like a perfect person, but his outfit was like a wizard's. The main character was surprised because the monster simply surrounded the hunters and did nothing to him. It was interesting what kind of boss was in this location, and maybe he was hiding somewhere nearby. But the goblin reasoned that perhaps this was not so, and if he had intelligence, he would not have simply surrounded them. Perhaps constantly sending ghouls was all that the boss of this location could do. There was a possibility that these ghouls were not controlled by a truly powerful black magician, but by a monster called Tarun. In the Abyss, they are known as the Ghoul Kings. He looked like a monster made up of thousands of ghouls. Those who see only ghouls and try to find the one who controls them risk suffering from a surprise attack. For most, ghouls do not pose a particular threat, but those whose skills are at an average level can be overwhelmed by numbers. At this time, a group of hunters found themselves inside a cave. The only food they had left was gloves and boots. It was the 28th day of the raid on the Dungeon Mirror Illusion of Chaos. As soon as they arrived on the first day, they lost some of the necessary provisions. But they found shelter underground, where they were able to hide from the evil ghouls. They were forced to leave all their food and quickly get to a safe shelter. They had the opportunity to seal the passage so that no one could get inside. The squad captain was in deep despair, because fortunately for him, there was no other way in and the gangster team spent a whole month without being able to do anything. One of the soldiers turned to the guy with the lowest rank and noticed that he had a very large backpack on his back. The guy didn't want to show what was in the backpack until his commander-in-chief gave the order to show all team members the contents of the bag. The commander allowed them to look and take what they needed, but in such a situation there was still little that could help them from there. And no one could refuse such a generous offer from the captain, but from the large backpack, all they could find were a few bottles in French that were intended for skin care. Then one of the soldiers shouted that it was all because of the group leader, that they had found themselves in this situation, and now he should answer for this misdeed. The second most senior gentleman refused to give any comments, 
and said that they should do whatever they wanted to him, since he would not take anyone's side. He added that in this situation, internal conflict is a direct path to the death of the entire group, and everyone needs to calm down and focus on surviving until the rescue team arrives, and that's all that can be said as the second in command. But one of the soldiers reminded that there could be no rescue squad, because only 10 people could enter this portal. And all because their leader took a useless porter, the rescue team can only consist of one person, but even one person can't defeat all these ghouls. Suddenly, a rebellion occurred in the squad. The soldiers wanted to throw out the ghoul leader and force him to clear the way for liberation, and at the same time look at the actions of the B-rank soldier. But the commander replied that they were simply sucking up to those who had money and power, and they would never be able to force him to do what they wanted. But it seemed like he had no choice, since there were six C-class hunters against him. Suddenly, their boss started to use a high-speed ice bullet. It was a spell of the fifth circle that would attack the enemy with ice bullets at a certain distance. At this point, the guy was determined and offered to fight if they wanted, and he would kill the first three who attacked him right away. The guy asked his colleague why he hadn't said anything yet, since they had said so much and thought so much about him. But the man replied that they wouldn't even listen to him if he said anything. He added that he still considered him a decent person, and it seemed that after this he would be able to change. But the commander asked not to praise him, because until the very last moment, he did not understand what was happening here. He had no hope, and he thought that he would die here anyway along with these bastards. And after all, they had already held out here for almost a whole month. Even if a rescue team arrives right after he surrenders, won't he regret it? The guy added that if someone really comes for them, he will give them all the wealth he has. And at that moment, the commander's words were interrupted by a powerful explosion. Skylar came to their aid, who was ready to help them. When he went inside, he immediately asked if there was anyone from Earth among them. When Skylar entered, he saw two men standing in front of him and asked them if they came from Earth. The commander did not know how to react and responded and looked at the guy in surprise. The team that was behind was delighted because they thought that there was a rescue team in front of them. After a few seconds, everyone began to rejoice and be happy because after a month, they were finally rescued. But the second commander said that they were idiots and that they should better prepare for battle. The soldiers were outraged by this and thought that their commander had gone crazy. But he added that the soldiers should not dare to discuss the orders of their superiors. If he told them to jump, they would jump. If he told them to fight, they would fight. He pointed his finger and asked if there was a one-person limit to entering the dungeon. Then how could two people be here? The main character looked thoughtful and asked if there was a limit per person and apologized for this misunderstanding. He said that he got to this place not through the entrance to the dungeon, but the frightened people asked if not through him, then how? And the guy said that they got here through the abyss. After the portals opened, accidents often occurred when many were pulled into them or into the dungeon where they disappeared. Most people did not return, but there were lucky ones who did. But the squad didn't want to believe it at all. For them, they could be either monsters or illusions. It was hard to believe that they were really from the abyss. Then the guy replied that it didn't matter whether they believed him or not. But did they have a choice left here? One of the commanders thought about this situation. Two energetic individuals of unknown strength level who could have come to this place from the abyss and exhausted conflict-torn hunters who had been starving for a long time. Otherwise, ordinary hunters below rank B. And he agreed, because even if they don't believe, in such a situation they have no other choice. The main character addressed everyone and asked them not to be too suspicious of the saviors. Because in any case, all the people of the earth in this was true. After Skylar was convinced that the people came from the ground, his body became covered in goosebumps, and he suddenly began to tremble a little. The commander noticed this reaction and thought how many emotions this guy had. Apparently, he really was lost in the abyss. Then one of the guys shouted what to do with these ghouls now. But the main character calmed them down by saying that they were all dead and the way was clear for them. Skylar remembered the plan for returning to Earth, which he shared with his allies, so as not to attract the attention of the earthly constellations and quietly expand the number of his own supporters. And instead of attracting excessive attention, he was going to carefully scout out the current situation on Earth. The team asked who the second guy was standing next to the main character, whether he was also missing, but the guy replied that he had an even more tragic story than him and that he had lost his memory. Odaigon didn't like this very much, because at such a young age it was difficult to lose memory, and he didn't want these nobodies to feel sorry for him. One of the commanders said that even if he was a mage, they wouldn't be able to defeat all the ghouls on their own. Even if two people were incredibly strong, it was still impossible. But the guy added that he uses martial arts, 
and at that moment a deathly silence fell, and the eyes of all the soldiers looked only at the main character. The team began to whisper among themselves various questions, such as how he could use martial arts, since this was the first time they saw it, and how long ago he fell into the abyss. Skylar decided to ask why they were staring at him like that, but it turned out that they hadn't seen the martial arts master in a very long time. The main character said that when he got into the abyss, martial arts masters were not held in high esteem at all. But he asked what year it was and heard in response that it was 2039, and by earthly standards 30 years had passed since the guy had been in the abyss. The soldiers began to remember what the longest record for being in the abyss was and remembered that one man had stayed there for 28 years, but now he is in a mental hospital. Then Skylar said that now talking about martial arts and dungeons is not so important. He asked Odaigon to give him a little fire, and he replied that he would do everything as the master said. And Skylar immediately reminded him that he had told him not to call him Sir, but only by his first name. The guy immediately began to chop up one of the large stones, which was located right at his feet. The group of soldiers saw something like this for the first time. They watched in amazement as the guy skillfully juggled with the stone and thought it was incredible. The main character was surprised by this, if this was the first time they had done this. Then apparently they really didn't have martial arts masters, and he gave everyone a plate. The guy carefully laid out several pieces on a plate, but the soldiers were confused, because they didn't know whose meat it was. Skylar said that in one TV show, Survive at Any Cost, he saw that a person can eat almost anything, and he recommended others to watch the show, because it can be useful in life. He placed the delicious steak on a stone plate and added that it was thanks to this transmission that he survived in the abyss. The main character began to fry the meat in a frying pan and reassured the boys that everyone would get food because there was enough meat for everyone, so let them be patient for a little while. A few moments later, each piece of delicious meat was on a plate and the guy offered everyone to try it. At first, people doubted whether they should eat this meat that the one who returned from the abyss gave them, but the enchanting aroma of the meat quickly convinced them. For those who had been on the brink of starvation for a month, this was a real feast. The guy was very surprised that they were very quiet, and perhaps they realized that Skylar gave them low-grade meat. But when each soldier tasted this meat, their eyes filled with tears of joy, because it was incredibly delicious. One of the soldiers suspected that this meat was unusual, and his mana began to replenish. Normally, if he used a few flame arrows, he would collapse from magical exhaustion. But now he felt like he could use a whole dozen of these spells. The soldier was grateful to the boy for giving them the special meat and thought he was a very generous man. But the silence made Skylar disappointedly decide that they looked so hungry that they would eat anything and next time it would be better to throw away the low-grade meat. The dungeon was designed in such a way that the ghouls were not only ordinary monsters, but also a crowd that formed the boss. And if they took them all out, they would clear the dungeon. So in order to get out, they had to finish off the rest. The guy was asked how he knew all this, but he replied that it was all because he had seen all sorts of things in the abyss. The situation became tense among the soldiers, and the lead captain separated from the detachment. Skylar suggested that while they were locked up, they had an internal conflict and apparently tried to kill each other. Odaigon added that internal conflict during a crisis situation was unimaginable for the goblins of the hilt, and considered the humans to be pathetic. Then the guy reminded him that he was also a human, and asked the goblin if he really didn't know about it, and he replied in horror that he didn't want to offend him, and asked for forgiveness. One of the squads of hunters who rebelled against the commander said that Odaigon was a very beautiful name. Apparently, they found another leader to take charge and said that they would take care of the remaining ghouls. A group of people tried to suck up to the man who could take them to dungeons and higher-level rewards and were very sympathetic to him because he had lost his memory. And if he didn't mind, they swore that they would be useful to him. But Odaigon quickly suspected their cunning plan and decided that he would let them do what they wanted because the master asked him to talk to them carefully. Skylar asked what they were doing, and one of the commanders replied that it was hard to find a strong hunter who could lead others into a high-ranking dungeon. The soldiers were very polite with the guy because he was their savior, and since he had been here for more than 30 years, he was also an elderly man. But the main character suggested taking into account only the earthly age of 28 years. Skylar knew that humans were trying to put on a better show of relationships in front of stronger hunters, but he was just curious why they were only picking on Odaigon. The guy asked, even though he was a powerful magician, why they didn't approach him. But the commanders had mixed reactions and said that the reason was that he was a martial arts master. Even among the martial artists, there was an A-rank hunter. The guy did not understand why they were treated so badly, 
because every martial artist was incredibly strong. When the men found out that Skylar was talking about Master Lee, they grabbed their heads, and the guy did not understand why they were reacting like that and what was wrong with his master. In 2009, just when the guy fell into the abyss, there were the same hunters who chose the path of martial arts, although it was believed that martial arts were inferior to magic, and most of these hunters went to China, the place of their greatest concentration. Although the martial artists were weaker, with the involvement of a large number of disciples, the revival of the martial arts era was possible, and there was also a living legend who had reached A rank, which meant that martial arts had a bright future. At least that's what they thought. The shocking news came out that Master Lee was involved in a rank manipulation scandal. In 2011, similar scandals were revealed in various countries. Hunters bribed judges and changed ranks. C ranks became B ranks. B ranks became A ranks and built incredible heroes. Master Lee was also considered an A rank hero of China, but he was actually a B rank hero and a fake. The guy couldn't believe these words because he even bought his photos and posters. How could he be a fake? The commander added that after this scandal, the reputation of martial artists suffered greatly, and many abandoned martial arts with the thought that it was impossible to achieve a high rank in this way. Today, no one uses martial arts because after the incident, this tradition disappeared, and there are no more students in schools where martial arts are taught. Skylar couldn't quite believe that his master had lied about this, and he began to calm down, because he needed to calm his key energy, because sadness could cause muscle atrophy. Then the guy asked another question whether everything was okay on Earth, but he was not quite understood. And he added that there was not an invasion of various constellations on the Earth. Then they asked him how he knew about this, because he was talking about the incident in 2011, when there was a disaster, but he was already in the abyss. The main character was upset, because while he was disappearing into the abyss, the goddess's prophecy came true and he was late. In the fall of 2011, when the case of rank manipulation was uncovered, that day everything was not as usual, and a bright flash similar to the sun was approaching the earth. It was a portal that was different from the normal portals in the dungeon, and the monsters were intelligent. It was an army with a purpose, an army that followed orders and acted according to a strategy to take over the land and lay the souls of earthlings at the feet of their constellation. The guy started shaking the man hard and demanded that he tell him what happened on earth next, whether the earth had been seized by evil constellations and he was late. But the man asked the main character to calm down, because where would they be if this happened? And he replied that they fought back. The man said that there were a large number of victims, but they were able to stop them. All the countries of the earth mobilized some of the best hunters who stopped the invasion. These words made the guy start to choke because then he didn't need to do anything else. And why was he wandering through this abyss? After Skylar went into the abyss, two years passed, and evil constellations invaded the earth. And yet the hunters of the land fully mobilized to fight back and succeeded. The protagonist did not know what to do next. Was the goddess's prophecy wrong or did she just miscalculate? It was all rather strange because it wasn't just a small skirmish, but a full-fledged invasion of the constellations. And even if the mortals had sent all their forces, was it really possible to stop them at all? The girl added that it was not just a matter of different levels of power, but that the constellation and mortals were completely different. And even if there were many hunters, they were just like small insects to them. Skylar clarified that they stopped the invasion, but how? And the hunter said that it was more like a truce. They were not sure that they needed to expand the territory they occupied, and the people would suffer too many losses if they tried to regain the lost territories. And they were worried whether the truce would last, but it still continues and probably because of the constellations that promised to protect the Earth. The girl immediately understood that if there were constellations here initially, then this makes sense. Because even if the Earth is captured by new constellations, they can transfer the power of the Avatar and make them fight. She added that unlike Skylar, the constellations rarely fight, but against him, they will have to go out and fight personally. Then the boy understood why the truce was still going on, because the invasion of the constellations changed the hierarchy. This is what caused the connection of the abyss with the Earth, and in order to avoid a full-scale war, a compromise was reached to restore the balance of power. The truce was possible because they either didn't want to fight or didn't want to lose their own avatars. Otherwise, he had no business here. The guy added that in order to stop the invasion of evil constellations, he went into the abyss but returned too late. But the kitten replied that this was not true at all. Although they are a couple of decades late, the situation is not yet over. The truce cannot last forever, for there are so many other constellations in the abyss that may still decide to invade the Earth. The kitten immediately warned the boy to be extremely careful with any new constellations 
as they were unlikely to honor the truce agreement. This meant that if the situation worsened, the Earth would turn into a battlefield where the constellations would fight for dominance over the Earth. At this time, Odaigon was praised for his magnificent shots and admired for his wonderful magic. One of the soldiers praised the guy, saying that he had never seen anyone use first circle magic so well. This really irritated the guy because all he heard was people admiring and praising Odaigon's magic. The soldiers were expecting that if they returned to Earth, it would be simply amazing because he was at the level of B rank or even A rank. They discussed the guy and realized that he had lost his memory and the soldiers were going to convince him to leave this Skylar and join them. They had one goal, to take the place of the main character, and then they would no longer have to obey the commander-in-chief of their squad. Skylar looked at Odaigon and didn't understand if everything was okay with him because he looked like he was eager for a fight. But he was even more frightened by the commander-in-chief of the detachment because he also looked as if he wanted to fight with someone. Then the main character asked directly if he wanted to fight these guys, but he waved his hands sharply and said that it was all wrong. Skylar didn't mind at all if he fought them, because he was in such shock, and even if fighting each other in a dungeon for hunters was a crime, the boy began to fear that perhaps his thinking had become abnormal after being in the abyss for too long. But his friends warned him to be careful, because on Earth it was not enough to simply hide the power of existence. They added that a great battle between the constellations could break out on Earth, and if the protagonist did not properly hide his identity as a training master, it could provoke a conflict. But the guy swore that he would be careful. Then he asked one of the commanders what was happening to the people who had returned from the abyss. The man said that they were undergoing a medical examination where they were asked about their experience, and one day one guy told about a giant-sized cat with a giant smile. The man also added that after the invasion of evil constellations, most countries banned becoming avatars of evil constellations. The guy was surprised by this and replied that after the war people became very strict, and this was true. The fighter said that in any case the procedure is not that complicated, and asked what country Skylar is from. He replied that she is from Korea, and then they will offer him new citizenship. He also added that most likely everything will be fine for the guy who lost all his memories. The protagonist turned to Odaigon and said that he had received enough information about the situation on Earth, and now he was also interested in what the skill level of the hunters was and whether there was a way to find out. Kitty suggested that there was a spell called Level Assessment that showed the level and characteristics. This would be enough, and suggested using it on them. The kitten asked why he asked Odaigon to do this, but the boy replied that he couldn't use magic. But that wasn't the reason. Because the guy was a constellation, he didn't need to use magic to see the power level. He wouldn't need to use his own essence power to do this. Any constellation could easily do this. And at that moment, the main character used the Eye of Saran and looked at the commander-in-chief of the squad. The guy revealed the whole essence of Richard Parker. He saw his level, strength, agility, magical power, and intelligence. The kitten added that if he mastered this ability, he would be able to see much more information, and he could also train this skill. Suddenly, the soldiers saw that the dungeon, the mirror illusion of chaos, had been cleared. And it will soon close, and the main character will finally head to Earth. The soldiers were very happy about this, because they would soon be at home on their native soil. The main character looked at the frying pan made of adamantine and saw that the kitten of lava and magma had tried hard, and it was much easier to cook complex dishes on it. Due to Skylar using the Eye of Sauron, his life force increased as he used the ability. At this time, a problem arose on the ground near the portal to the dungeon. Strange phenomena began to pass near it, and suddenly the dungeon became dangerous and unstable, and it was impossible for reporters to enter here. People saw and could not believe their eyes, because an entrance to the dungeon appeared there, and this meant only one thing, that it had been successfully cleared. A bright light formed, in which stood a team of hunters, as well as the main character with his partner. When Skylar appeared, the first thing he was surprised by was how bright it was here, and how beautiful the earthly sky looked. In a group of hunters, the gangster managed to clear the dungeon mirror illusion chaos in the Mojave Desert. The final dungeon rank became C rank, and the commander was furious, because it seemed impossible to him since there were 1,000 ghouls in there. The man said that he received help from a qualified magician, and that F-rank monsters alone were not many, and they knew this very well. The dungeon prank was determined by the strength of the main boss. They looked at the test stats, and that's why it was rated C instead of F. In any case, the sheriff congratulated him on his safe return, and added that his father was very worried about him. Since the Earth didn't know about the ghoul king Tarun, they didn't know that they had passed the A-rank dungeon. The protagonist held a magazine in his hands and was wondering why the commander of Parker's group was a real celebrity and why there were so many paparazzi around him. 
At that moment, doctors entered the room and announced that Skylar, based on his test results, was completely healthy. The girl was very surprised because she had never seen such a perfect body as if God had given it to him. The guy replied that the only thing he could do in the abyss was to train. The doctor added that he was also mentally stable and he was really lucky. After all, 30 years have passed and now he will have a hard time with rehabilitation and if he wants to move to another country, they will be happy to help him. But the girl acted as if she didn't want him to stay in this country. On the contrary, several men asked Odaiga not to worry about the fact that he had lost his memory and that the American government was on his side, since America was the richest and most powerful country. Only high-ranking magicians received such treatment. With martial arts masters, things were completely different. But the guy was firm and replied that he would always be the same, and no matter how many offers came, he would always follow Mr. Schuyler. People tried to find out what happened to this guy in the abyss, that he was so devoted to the main character, but the guy did not reveal all the secrets and answered that he met him when Odaigon had already lost all his memories. Then people started to speculate that it might be because he was the first person Odaigon met after losing his memories. They also approached Skylar and asked him if he ever seriously considered moving to another country that they would help him with anything he needed. But he replied that there was no better country for a hunter than America. At this time, a group of people were quietly talking to each other using a simple telepathic artifact. Odaigon suggested that he could easily get inside using magic and tell them what they were talking about. The guy agreed to this proposal and immediately heard them say that he would stay here even when he received a green card that now he was saying no, but he would soon understand that America really was better, and they were still worried about it. There was also talk about a magician named Odaigon. They were sure that other countries would try to find out everything about him, and for this, they would place spies near him so that others could not get close to him. As soon as the guy heard that they would be spying on them, he asked Skylar if he could get rid of all the spies right now. But the main character asked him about the unheard situation, because he should understand what is happening here. There were several other procedures that a returnee had to go through to get a green hunter's card, and one of them was a test. The protagonist was asked to take part in one survey for 30 minutes and was warned to be careful that the electrodes did not fall while they were conducting the examination. When the guy started the test, he read the first question, which asked if he had ever made a contract with the constellation warrior of madness and blood. It was necessary to write a fragment in which this warrior was ridiculed. Perhaps it might seem childish, but it is the most effective way, because a servant who has made a contract with a constellation will never be able to mock the master. This was the best way to determine if someone had made a contract with an evil constellation. They adopted this method after contacting the constellations. Next, the guy was asked to measure a certain amount of mana into a crystal ball, as much as he could. After the main character began to measure the amount of mana, the ball turned yellow and immediately began to collapse, and the measurements ended there. The guy thought that in order to move around here more freely, he would better get a higher rank than 30 years ago because he was probably an A-rank hunter. The amount of mana contained in the measuring crystal ball was much higher than that of the average hunter. When hunters passed the exam, they filled the ball with their own mana to increase their rank. The crystal ball changed color to determine the total amount of mana. It was a little unusual for the main character to control his own strength, but it was not his fault that in the abyss he only encountered strongmen and perhaps revealing his true strength was still a mistake. His partners watched him and did not understand whether he did it on purpose or not, because you can't attract unnecessary attention. It can reveal his essence. The earth is not like an abyss. There were its own rules there. In the abyss, he can find strong opponents at any time and fight them as much as he wants. But on earth, this happens under strict control. The opportunity to rise to rank A is given only to hunters of rank B. Rank C cannot skip a step, in order to reach the rank of a hero and become famous as planned, you need to grab any chance and increase the hunting rank to the maximum. The doctor turned to the guy and said that all measurements had been taken and the results would be ready soon and he could wait in the dorm. Skylar really hoped that he would be given at least a B rank. As soon as they left the laboratory, the doctor immediately picked up the phone and made a call to one clan and said that he called about a case they were interested in. When the boy started looking at the cards, he discovered that his friend was given a B rank he was surprised at how well Odaigan hid his abilities. But when the main character opened his own card, he couldn't believe what he saw, because he was awarded the rank C+, and his age was indicated as 57 life years. He couldn't believe that in 30 years, the average amount of mana for a hunter had increased so much, and at that moment, 
the clan commander approached them from behind. Skylar asked why he came, but the guy reminded him that he said that he would definitely reward him for saving his life, because he returned after 30 years and must have nowhere to settle. And the guy offered to stay at his house and be there as long as he wanted. On the way home, Odaigon asked if he found it suspicious that the guy had suddenly become so polite to them. But the main character immediately recalled how he repelled the wolf's attack and said that he would not forget it either because the goblins gave him a warm welcome and promised to repay him for saving him. He told how they prepared a bath of acid slimes for him and offered to gladly accept the children of their nobility as sacrifices. But the goblin could not believe that all this caused him inconvenience. But as it turned out, it was all about the difference in culture. In any case, this guy might also have wanted to repay for saving him. But Odaigon had a different opinion. He believed that the race was annoying and incapable of magic, and yet gratitude was alien to them. The main character was surprised by these words, because in fact he was also a human, and the goblin remembered this and immediately asked for forgiveness. Skylar approached Richard Parker. He introduced himself to him as a very famous person in business circles, and then the guy added that he was looking forward to him giving him all his fortune. The main character said that he heard someone in the dungeon promising to give up all the inheritance for saving the commander. But the guy screamed in fear that this did not happen. Skylar said he was joking and replied that he didn't need much. He asked for a place where he could settle down temporarily until he could settle down somewhere himself, since he had been in the abyss for too long and was still not getting used to the ground. But Parker replied that he could live in his house as long as he wanted, something he could easily give to his savior. Odaigon decided that the guy was being too arrogant, having borrowed only some house. Suddenly, one of the sports cars stopped Parker's entire motorcade. The sudden braking caused everything inside to get mixed up, and no one could understand what was going on. Parker's driver said that someone blocked the way with a car. The main character immediately thought that perhaps this was an assassination attempt, and some evil constellation learned of his essence. At this time, Odaigon opened the door and asked the master to sort out this situation. The guys got out of the car and decided to first see what kind of psycho blocked their way. Skylar never thought he would see a car like this in the middle of the desert, but all that could be said about it was that it looked very American. A man got out of the car, who was dressed very stylishly, and Skylar, along with Odaigon, felt that he was different. He was still mortal, but he could not be put on the same level with people. The man was very strong. When the man came closer, Richard Parker immediately recognized that in front of him was Sam, nicknamed the Dragon. Richard introduced himself to him and Sam immediately recognized him as the youngest son of the Parker family. The man said that he heard that his father had a lot of worries because he became a hunter and advised him to do what he wanted. Then the man turned to the guy and said that he had lost much hope, but in front of him was the real Skylar. The main character couldn't believe it, but in front of him was the leader of his clan. The man heard rumors that they were here. A lot of time had passed, and they really hadn't seen each other for a long time. Everyone stood in a stupor, and Richard couldn't believe that the dragon knew Skylar, but it was all true. All the guards ran out of the car and were surprised to see an S-rank hunter, Dragon Sam, standing in front of them. They were talking about how they had heard that he had gotten married again last month, and it was his 19th wedding, and it was all too confusing. After all, was it really this man who stood before him, when in the distant past, he suggested that he take his time, since their strength was not up to a B-rank dungeon, and now... He is the leader of the most famous clan. In 2011, attacks by evil constellations suddenly broke out all over the world, and the city of Seoul was no exception. That period was called the Seoul Disaster, at which time all the hunting clans located in the city responded, and the leader of the clan of the great and incomparable was one of those who tried with all his might to save the country. Thanks to the dedication of hunters like Sam, the Republic of Korea was able to somehow eliminate the threat of occupation. They did everything they could, protected everything they could protect, and were true heroes. All those fighting the threat were called heroes, and, as expected, they received nothing more than the title of hero. At this time, in the hospital, the guy turned to one of his partners, because he still couldn't pay off the debt, because healing magic was not included in the insurance. And even the compensation for the hunter's treatment did not help him. He did not fit this article, because he did not receive a shrapnel wound from a monster. And after that, Sam moved to America, because the attitude towards hunters is much better here. He talked about how he got support, hunted monsters, started his own company, and even appeared on TV once. And that's how things gradually came together. The guy asked how much money he had, and even the rich son couldn't object to him. Then Sam asked him if he knew where he lived now, in Hunter's Hills. But the guy didn't know what kind of area it was. But as it turned out, 
It was the richest area in Los Angeles. He jokingly called the guy a brat and said that as before, you couldn't get the word out of him with pliers. After all, who else is capable of disappearing, leaving only a letter on one pitiful page? The man suspected that he was crazy about training, but he didn't think that he would go to such madness. Perhaps he should have been taken to the hospital earlier. Sam added that some even wanted to announce his death, since only a few returned from the abyss alive. The guys were even going to hold a wake in this honor. But when the man found out that he had been discovered, he was very surprised that he was on the list of those who had returned from the abyss. Sam then turned to Parker and finally asked what he was doing in his car. The boy was frightened and said that he had saved his life and as a sign of payment, he was with him. The man was very surprised by these words because he had already thought that he was taking him to the family estate for an autopsy. At this point, the destination was changed from the Parker's house to Sam's house. The guy saw how the world had really changed in 30 years and all the city streets were now teeming with machines. After the gates opened in Los Angeles, rich and famous hunters began to flock to the city. All of their clanmates, rising stars who wanted to join them, and people who viewed hunters from a business perspective, it was currently the most densely populated city of hunters on Earth. Sam continued that from the moment he arrived in America, he asked to be informed of the latest news of who had returned from the abyss and threatened that if even one name was missed, he would leave for another country. It was funny to watch the FBI and CIA report with stony faces. Otherwise, he would have quickly changed his citizenship and the government would have suffered huge losses. The main character looked out the window and said that he had a very cool house and that this house was the size of an Olympic stadium. But Parker interrupted the guy and said that these buildings were for hired workers and servants, and the real home of Sam the Dragon was located further away. They immediately approached the real house, past fountains, palm trees, and beautiful parks. As the motorcade passed along the streets, the main character saw hunters standing in line for tickets. He didn't understand what these coupons were for, because this wasn't a bank. But Sam replied that in order for them to see him at least once, they needed to get a coupon. But Skylar couldn't fully understand why they needed this, and what it was all for. But these people came to ask to give them a chance. The guy asked what kind of chance they were talking about, but the man said that they would still have time to discuss all this. When they went inside, they saw beautiful pandas. The guy couldn't believe that pandas were in America. Did he really steal them? But as it turned out, it was a gift from the Chinese government. They then begged on their knees for him to come and send it to him. The protagonist asked what was troubling the Chinese government that they made such a generous gift. Then the man remembered that the guy was in the abyss and knew nothing, and then he urgently gathered all the secretaries in one place. He ordered to select the best teachers for him in politics, economics, culture, and other sciences so that Schuyler could be taught everything. At this point, Parker's driver said that there was a great chance to meet the dragon at the moment, and that some people had been waiting for months for the chance to see it. But the guy continued that their last name was clearly not Parker, and why should he beg for this chance? Besides, he had the feeling that next to him he was getting a year older with every minute. At this time, one of the secretaries asked if there were too many teachers and too much information, and if he could find out the real reason for this commotion. But as soon as the man introduced himself to him, he immediately heard that he was fired from that very second, because he hired them for a lot of money in order to entrust them with troublesome work. Sam's words and requests did not sound like a joke and he did not ask not to answer stupid questions. Then the man turned to the sixth secretary and asked where all the models who were supposed to be at the party were, because he clearly remembered that he had missed one and ordered her to work faster. After Sam gave everyone their assignments, he turned to Skylar and said that they could now calmly think everything over. The guy couldn't believe that the man had changed so much in such a short period of time because such situations were not a reason for dismissal. But the man objected, saying that he did not know how much he was paying them, and quickly ordered the seventh secretary to come to him. When the secretary approached, he said that in two weeks he had received about $230,000. But the main character still couldn't understand how the size of the salary was connected with being fired on the spot. Then Sam replied that when he hired them, he clearly warned that he was paying the highest salary. But in return, one mistake, and the employee is fired, and they all know about it. But Skylar was very disappointed with this approach, and then Sam decided to leave the seventh secretary. The guy turned to Sam and asked why he didn't become a role model, as a true clan leader should. In one of the audiences, a Stanford University professor, who specialized in the science of artifacts and caves, spoke to the main character. She also had experience as a manager of two B-rank hunters and one A-rank hunter. These words really surprised the guy, 
and he decided to surprise her in return and told her that in high school, he once lifted a total of 500 kilograms. The teacher decided to briefly explain what had happened over the past 30 years. And after 30 minutes, the guy screamed loudly in the audience. He couldn't believe that evil constellations occupied China, North Korea, Europe, and Latin America. South Korea was not captured because it was one of the countries that resolved the situation relatively quickly. But after that, many Korean hunters went abroad because America seemed especially profitable to many. Also, clan leader Sam also moved here at that time. His leader was so kind. What did he have to endure? He was the kind of man who was dumped by women every day and who discouraged him from going into a B-rank dungeon. But suddenly, he became the Dragon Sam, an S-rank hunter with a lot of money, who at 70 years old has married 19 times. The Lava and Magma Kittens said that everything worked out great and that this hunter could be a great avatar. Could this person really not be trusted? He could be trusted. Then Skylar went to Sam and told him everything about how he suddenly went into the abyss to prevent the end of the world. And while he was trampling there for a couple of decades, he suddenly became a constellation, and whether he wanted to come under his wing and become an avatar. The man was very surprised by the guy's words, and he replied that they don't dabble in drugs. The kitten of lava and magma said that there was no need to do that, and that he could and would understand everything if everything was explained to him in detail. But something still bothered the guy. The leader had not given up for 30 years. Trying to find him, the guy thought that he was the one who could be trusted, because there was training equipment here like a gym in the backyard, and the guy did not want to just drag him into the affairs of the constellations.